and check two. Blog Talk Radio. Bob Arum 
already pertaining to the Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua talks. Now, I know someone published some quotes from him. Who the hell was it? Oh, I think I know who it is. Um, I, I got to double check, though. But, you know, kind of backing off of that, but it's too late because, you know, th- those quotes are already out there. Um, so we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Could Tiafima Lopez end up being a free agent? Some people say, well, he has these four belts. Couldn't he just keep doing that? Uh, maybe, you know, if there's a, if there's a buyer, yeah, he could. Um, but obviously, you know, there's, there's a fair amount to talk about when it comes there. Um, but you know, it doesn't surprise me. It's really funny. Um, it doesn't surprise me that Triller came in. They're one of the folks that I thought was going to, um, bid on this thing. And obviously they did to a tune of over $6 million. Um, there's, all of a sudden, Manny Pacquiao and Mikey Garcia look to be fighting. I have some audio. I have a boxing scene article that we'll we'll talk about a little bit. This one kind of came out of left field. Um, but, you know, it's kind of back to where we were square one, in a sense, before the pandemic um, hit. And we are almost back to square one as far as a year. I think in another, what, week? It'll be um, a year since the country uh, shut down. That's crazy how time flies. Um, So we got some pay-per-view fights that are like, nah, no thanks, hard pass. And also a fight that actually just got officially announced. We knew it was a done deal. We figured, I think we talked about this last week, that it was going to be May 22nd, and that is a done deal. Now, Jose Ramirez versus Josh Taylor in an undisputed for all the marbles at 140, one of the three undisputed that we will hopefully get this year, of course, I'm talking about this one, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, and then uh, Charlo and Castaño. That would be pretty damn dope. Um, and, you know, we will talk about fights or fight lineups, maybe, you know, talking about the PBC, fights that, you know, maybe coming, of course, we'll talk current fight news, of course, but um, it seems like at some point, you know, some fights are going to get announced in a in a batch of them, let's put it that way. Um, you know, I noticed a lot of the, we'll get into this in a second when we're recapping Canelo, but uh, it is really funny how the Mayweather-Canelo stuff comes up every time Canelo fights, whichever side people are on it or, you know, it just, it's like, God, it's just so funny how you either got to hate one or the other or both. I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just funky. It's just like, can't someone just fight without this type of stuff every single time? But that's part of being popular. You do get a lot of hate. You got a lot of love, a lot of fanboys, a lot of like, what the hell? Uh, but it is funny. Uh, it is really funny. But, you know, they can be both great in different ways. Um, and we don't even have to, because of course, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, Mayweather fought him when he was young, but it's not like Mayweather was in his prime, you know, vice versa. So it is what it is. I I try not to get caught up in too much of that, but man, it was really explosive, uh, this this time around. I, I don't know what it was, but, um, but, um, yeah, I, man. Okay, um, at the end of the hour, Portland, at the end of the hour, like in an hour you're talking about? Sorry. All right, I'm just going to. Um, anyway, actually, I just realized I'm getting a whole lot of messages. <laughs> it's funny when people. Some people just listen to one show once a month. Some people listen to it every week. Some people a handful of times a year. But they sure don't listen to it much. But they act like they do based off some comments from last week or something like that. I'm getting these messages that are just really, really funny. Um, But we're going to address the Tiafimo stuff because, like I said, there is an in-between. You can respect a hustle but also respect your own hustle or your own guidelines, or your own morale? I don't know, your own rules, or whatever you want to say. 
Uh, so there is a variety of stuff. Like I said, um, Pacquiao and Mikey. Sounds like it's pretty much a done deal all of a sudden. I guess I'm not shocked. This is boxing, and, and he needs to fight and whatnot. Now, what will it be? You know, on the zone or on PBC? That'll be kind of interesting. Maybe Triller will step up on this one. Who freaking knows? Um, it sounds like Gervonta Davis is going to be back in the summer. I'm taking a wild guess. It's really not that wild. And saying he's going to be the co-feature uh, on Mayweather's pay-per-view. We have some uh, information when it comes to that, too. Not that I'm going to break down the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight uh, on this year's show. But there is some, hmm, I wonder if it is that indeed. Anyway, if this is your first time listening to the Rope Dope Radio podcast, welcome. It streams live right here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Rope Dope Radio. It streams live at archives. Um, you know, right there on Blog Talk, but you don't have to listen to the browser or download the show directly there. Some folks do that. If not, you can find the platform, Rope It Up Radio Podcast, on Apple Podcast, on iHeartRadio, Player FM, TuneIn, Spricker, Stitcher, almost across the board. We're also part of the Grueling True Sports Podcast Network, which can be found almost everywhere. While you're at it, why don't you head on over to thegruelingtruth.com. It's boxing, football, basketball, baseball, everything in between. And while you're at it, I got something for you. I, I don't know what I was doing there. I, I just said while you're at it again. Anyway, um, I got something for you is what I was going to try to say. Um, it's called AT&T TV Now. It's live streaming cable. There is a seven-day free trial. There's no annual contract. The plan starts as low as $55 a month. Of course, you can stream it anywhere. They have the cloud DVR. And just for signing up, you get a free week of HBO Max. And if you sign up for the Max package, you get a free – well, that comes with HBO Max plus a free month of Showtime, which is normally $11 on this platform, boxing fans. Um, AT&T TV Now, like I said, live streaming cable. All right. Okay. So we're going to, you know, go lightly when it comes to the – uh the recap, because let's be honest, you know, this isn't uh, too many round by round stuff. I mean, they're really not a whole lot happening with Canelo um, in Yieldstrom. I mean, he came out a pretty mediocre first round jabbing, getting to the body a little bit, uh, the left hooks to the body. Um, then it was like a jab and a right hand, and bam, Yieldstrom was just on the ground. Just like, what the hell happened? What, wait a second. You know, like, that it, it, it's funny because Canelo had this weird look on his face, like seriously, that's it, just a, a jab right hand. Uh, he did get up, you know. Canelo looked surprised, not that he got up, but that he knocked down so quick. Uh, it was like uppercuts, hooks to the body and head, really just taking him out the corner, stopped it. It was just like a no, just a non-starter. It, yeah, I mean, wow. So. I don't know, man. You know, it, it, it is what it is. This is a worse fight than I thought it would be, but that's not saying I thought it was going to be decent. You know what I mean? Um, you know, maybe. I did think Yildirim would be able to land for a handful of rounds and then get knocked out, but he hasn't really fought any good competition since Darrell, and, you know, he. Uh, I, it just it is what it is. Um, you know, they had a concert going on um i'm sure the the folks there in miami uh had fun with that didn't look like jermel charlo did no i'm just kidding um because he did the, the live stream um you know it is what it is i don't know what else to say this was just the fight sucked there's just no way around it now that we see it in the ring but as a stay busy fight when we already know the opponent billy joe saunders may 8th you know, I'm willing to suck it up and be like, whatever, dude. You know, this is how it used to be when people stayed busy. Um, but, yeah, you'd like to see, like, even Mauricio Solomon was like, oh, you know, that, that was, that did suck. You know, we need to, we, I need to look at, you know, my rankings and stuff like that. Of course, not just the WBC, but all the sanctioning belts. It's, it's really hit or miss, right? Very hit or miss when it comes to the rankings. I mean, it's. You just never know. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's 
it's not. Uh, sometimes it's really good, and they don't call it for a while. You know what I mean? Uh, but it is what it is. That fight was done. It is over now. And on to Billy Joe Saunders. And, you know, there has been a lot of talk lately about deserve, deserving a fight. I think I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, uh, what is Charlo hasn't even fought at 168. He doesn't deserve it. Uh, Benavides doesn't have a high-level win. Uh, he doesn't deserve it. Um, Plant only has one good win. He doesn't deserve it. Uh, and obviously, Billy Joe Saunders. Some people like, yeah, but he, he deserves it. Some people say he doesn't deserve it. So the point is you have a belt. You know, Benavides now, David Benavides is, is talking a lot like Canelo's ducking him. And to me, that's just kind of funny because Canelo said he wants the belt. So there you go. If you if you would have just – there's one person in the whole wide world, and it's a big freaking world. It's round too, guys, just so you know. Um, you know, all this it, – it just it – just, he's got one person to blame. It's himself. He dropped the belt. He got stripped of the belt because of weight. End of story, dude. You said that you'd fight a title eliminator and, and fight your way back up. Well, you're going to have to do that because that's the second time you dropped the belt. So this whole always oh, not mentioning my name. Well, you're not a champ, dude. Right now, you're not. I know you didn't lose it in the ring. I get it. But some of that whole now he's ducking. Every, now now Canelo's ducking everybody or he's not ducking. It, it really matters what part of the boxing Twitter you're, you know, sides you're on or whatever. Uh, but Billy Joe Saunders just looking at him stylistically – and also, you know, yeah, 168, he's completely unproven. I mean, look who he got the belt from. <laughs> we can make fun of some of these other belts. Sure, of course we can. We can do that for all these sanctioning, but um, sanctioning, you know, belts. But <laughs> he, who the hell has he fought at 168? You know, it is what it is. You may not like this division. Um, that's fine. That's cool. Maybe, you know, when Canelo's done with this, all these fights are going to get made after that, and those will be the best fights. That could, you know, well be. Generally, when a cash cow is in a a weight class, this is what happens. Does it suck? Sure. Yeah, it can it can delay certain fights that you just wish would happen. You know, I wish, uh, like Darrell, right? Well, he just had a draw. So should he be up for the title limiter since it was a draw? No, probably shouldn't. Right, so Benavides is going to win his side of the title eliminator. Well, like in a perfect world, um, Jermall Charlo would just use his WBC um, influence in a sense because you're a, you have a belt down there, so you can uh, a lot of times you can just move up and fight for a belt. So maybe they would do that for the interim, uh, I you know WBC which would put you in line for mandatory for Canelo's belt. That would be dope. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, there is some rumors out there that uh, Charlo and Golovkin uh, was, was negotiated, or not negotiated, but were, were, there were some talks, there were some offers. I don't know if that's true, though. Uh, just putting that out there as far as I don't know if that is actually true. Um, but, you know, stylistically, Billy Joe Saunders – is a guy that potentially could give Canelo some problems. I, I don't know. I mean, he looked good in his last fight as far as his conditioning and how many punches he threw and that type of thing, right? Um, we know he can move really well on the uh, outside. I, I don't know. Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know if Canelo can – cut the ring off on a high level guy I've seen Canelo improve all of us have right so many in, in a variety of ways but cutting off the ring I'm not sold on that just yet now can he cut the ring sure but can he consistently cut the ring against a high level boxer like a Arislandi Lara I won't even go Canelo or I mean Floyd um can he do that against Arislandi Lara or did he do that against Arislandi Lara no that was a while ago who has he had to back up? You know, Jacobs, something like that. I mean, Golovkin, he backed up, but it's not like uh, Golovkin is known to be a high-level outboxer. But like I said, you know, the things that he did to Lemieux, Billy Joe Saunders, I don't think he can just go ahead and do that to Canelo either, though. I always thought Lemieux, David Lemieux, was vastly overrated. 
Uh, he has power, no doubt. Um, and I'm not trying to just rip him for some early stumbles in his career or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of people maybe just go right to that. That's not the case. I'm just saying, like, what's his best win? Um, and, and look how he got his title, too. I mean, there's there's all sorts of ways you get your title shit. Look at the first way Canelo got a title, maybe, right? I mean, there, there's all sorts of ways to look at this. But stylistically, Billy Joe Saunders seems like he's in good shape now. That's his biggest thing. Um, he gets the fight, whether you think it's deserved or not. He, you know, he's been in line for Golovkin or Canelo uh, a few times now, and he finally got the fight. But you know, at 160, it would be better, no doubt. Like I said, Billy Joe hasn't done much at 168, and Billy Joe looks really bad when bad. When he looks really bad, he looks horrible. He's getting hurt. He's looking like shit. It's really bad fights out there that he looked good. Now, if you look at the Chris Eubank Jr., if you look at the Andy Lee, the first part of those fights, he looked really good. Then he faded. He has a tendency of fading in some of these higher-level fights that he's had. He didn't fade against Lemieux. Remember when Canelo used to fade, too, actually. He wouldn't punch a bunch uh, because he would would get tired during fights. You can see it, actually. That's when he was kind of trying to find his, where his body and weight is as well. But anyway, um, the build-up as far as Billy Joe Saunders talking a bunch of crap, that'll be pretty fun. Um, I don't think Saunders, you know, I think the movement will give Canelo minor issues. I, I actually do. I don't think 168 great for uh, Saunders, uh, but I see Canelo winning by decision. Um, but, I, you know, I think stylistically there is something there. He, he's very crafty. Um And like I said, when he's focused, that's a big win, or if. But when he is focused, he is a pretty damn good fighter. He hasn't necessarily gotten to prove it at all at 168, but he has some pretty solid wins. The problem is they are a long time ago. It would have been nice to see him against Andre. Totally different style, obviously, than Canelo. But, um, you know, clearly (laughs) that wasn't Andre's fault there. I may rip on Andre, you know, a bunch, but. It's not really ripping. I, I'm just critical of it. But, you know, that, that definitely wasn't Andre's fault. So it is what it is. March 8th, no matter what you think, um, a lot of people saying, oh, he's running through the Euro bums, and it's only the American guys that can give him a test. Maybe, maybe, you know, Billy Joe will just be on the move the whole time and fluster him, and we won't see those big combinations and Canelo set up stuff you know who knows who knows um but i do like that he's active and like it or not he does have a belt if you wanted to see the david benavides fight i do too i think his jab and the way he sets up stuff and the activity he's not the best defender but i really like that fight size and everything but you know you have to keep your belt to be in line to get you know what i mean it's not like he's a huge you know so I think David Benavides will get his shot at Canelo at some point. But until that time, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just Benavides. That's who's, you know, that's who to blame for losing a belt. I mean, that's that's just facts. Um, Oh, we did have Zhang and Forrest. Uh, Jerry Forrest got knocked down, what, three times in three rounds? Straight right hands. I think the first one was a left hook, right? A short left left hook or a cross or whatever. Um, the, a right hand early in the second just froze uh, Forrest. He did fire back, though, two separate times, even after getting knocked down with the right hand. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was a straight right hand. And, and Forrest looked, uh, his legs looked bad, dude. He looked, it looked really bad when he was trying to walk it off. But uh, then, you know, he actually closed pretty strong, and you could make an argument that he won all the other rounds. Uh, maybe he won from, you know, all but one from the fourth round to the tenth round. Um, and you could see that Zhang was just freaking, or Zong was just, uh, he was gassing majorly. He was holding. Forrest got a little tired, too. There was a point deducted late for pulling down a head on uh, Zhang. Um, but he just landed the better shots for us. 
Um, you know, nice hooks to the head and body, a few right hands here and there, um, like a flurry in the last minute or so with both hands in the 10th round. I don't know. It is what it is. It was actually 93, 93, 93, and 95, 93. That was a scorecard. So, um, and the, one of the scorecards that had the 95, 93, that was for Forrest. So, um, I either had it a draw as well, uh, 93, 93, or maybe 94, 92, you know, for Forrest. Um, the round, 7, 3, or 6, 4, I'd say that's pretty pretty basic. You know, nothing too crazy there. But, yeah, it was a fun slobber knocker. You know, that's what they call them when they're heavyweights like that, where it just – it's fun because people are hitting the deck. It gets sloppy. There's holding. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, stop doing it. Then they have another flurry. So it was kind of all over the place. But um, still had, you know, its moments, shall I say. It was It was all right. You know what I mean? It made up for, well, I shouldn't say it made up for the whole thing, but you know, it is what it is. That, that's just, that's just how it turned out. Um, so yeah, unfortunately Martinez, uh, what did he get? Oh, he got hurt. He messed up his, his like, I think his wrist or his hand. I remember seeing that picture. So he got thrown off. Um, anyway, like I said, at least we know who he's fighting in it. And you know, from all the sounds of it, we know Canelo's fighting Caleb Plant, too, as long as he doesn't get hurt in September. I mean, even his promoter that he's working with right now, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Sports, says that's the case. And he's still holding that December date. You know, that, that's what he's saying. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, Jesus Ramos, you know, did, wasn't really in a, a, a tough fight. Uh, I think it only lasted, what, two, three rounds. It was like a left hook that knocked him down. Um, he was jabbing him pretty easily right away, dropped him really hard, TKO. Uh, he moves on. Um, I do like it, Jesus Ramos, though. It just this wasn't going to show much. Uh, Vito Melanecki fought no Lopez. Noel no, uh, Lopez. He came out with a solid jab, a few good counters. Um, that hard right hand that he kind of rolled, he had like jabbed, he kind of rolled the jab and landed that counter right or right hand. That was nice. That was actually very nice by Vito. Um, he's starting to come around. To me, he look, he's one of those performances as a prospect, what, 8-0? I think he's 8-0, 5 KOs or something like that. Um, I liked what I saw there. His jab was steady. Like I said, he was countering really well. And that little swivel, you know, rolling the jab, knocking him down, that was a good shot, man. So Vito looks like he's starting to, although he's still only 18 or whatever, 19, he's starting to get some of that man strength. He's starting to, you could see he's starting to fill out a little bit. He was attacking the body and head after that. Um, but, yeah, nothing much there on the undercard. And, you know, on paper, like I mentioned, um, I think I mentioned earlier in the show and then at the end of last week, as far as the preview part, I did mention it was like a plus 300 or a plus 365, or I think he even saw a plus 265 for Davis, if I remember correctly. But it's not, I did, like, the odds were, like, decent, but I got to admit, I did actually think that this one, not a walkover, because Davis is good, but I, I did think Darrell would actually win it cleanly, like cleanly, eight to four, nine to three out. I thought it'd be like nine to three, ten to two or something like that, to be honest. Um, but it, it was a better fight um than expected, you know. Um it wasn't like this, this it turned out pretty good though. I got I gotta admit, it, it really did. Um it's kinda you know, the the first round or two was pretty slow. Um then they both kind of started having moments. Davis was landing his hook, um, and he was jabbing and kind of pity patting combination really quick. You know, that was kind of the whole fight. Who's landed the better shot and who's busier? Davis was clearly, like, busier, um, but did he land the better shot? You know, that that's, that's kind of what this fight came down to. Um, I did give... 
I don't know about the first round, but Darrell I gave the second round. Davis I gave the third jabs, and he actually landed, started landing his uppercut too. That was nice with hooks and stuff. A couple of fun exchanges though in the mid part of this fight. Um, down the stretch, both of them, like in the fourth round, were landed really good hooks on each other. Darrell just landing the harder shot. Um, Darrell, I thought, won the fifth beyond like a late left hook. I thought he did the, the better, the hooks and right hands, the body and head. Sixth round was really, really close. Seventh round, I did give to Davis. I thought he had some really good counters. I think it was a counter right, if I remember correctly. Eighth round was Darrell for me. He just landed the better shots, although Davis did something in there. Um, I gave Davis the 12th, too. I think I gave Darrell 9, 10, 11, and then 12th there. So I had it 7 to 5, um, maybe 8 to 4, maybe 6 to 6, but I settled in kind of in the 7 to 5 range. Um, it was 115, 113 um, for both of them. Davis and then Darrell, and then 114, 114. Darrell landed 161 to 139. Like I said, busier was Davis 521 to 435. But, you know, throwing less, throwing harder, or at least landing harder, I should say, and landing at a higher percentage probably does enough for Darrell to win that fight. But I was pleasantly surprised that it was a little, it was more competitive. Like I said, I thought it was like 10 to 2, 9 to 3 tops, you know. But Darrell's in that part of his career where he is starting to fade some. So, um, you know, how, you know, how just faded is he? It's a good question. You know what I mean? That is a good question. Um, and where do we go from here? You know, I don't know. That, that I think that's a good question because it kind of seemed like, you know, the WBC was going to have Darrell – and Benavides, who you assume anyway, you know, was going to win his next fight. Um, and they were just going to make Benavides work work his way back, have a fight for Eliminator, fight Darrell again, because that fight did end on a cut, even though I thought Benavides was starting to clearly win the fight. I thought Darrell did good, you know, in the first few rounds. And then clearly Benavides took over that fight. But it was a cut um, that ended it. You know, it's not like he knocked him out that way. But... Um, that's what it looked like. Hey, you got to work your way back. You fight this decent little fight with Ellis and then fight Darrell. That'll put you in the mandatory spot for Canelo's belt. And he even said that, like I mentioned, David Benavides made that clear that, hey, you know, I'll find my way back. I know I messed up. I got to take a title limit or whatever. So, but what, what are they going to do now? Are they just going to go ahead and do it anyway? They could, obviously they hit their sanctions uh, or you know, will it be somebody else? If you look at the rankings, could it be like Danny Jacobs or, or something like that? It might be David Lemieux if you look at the rankings. One, he's actually fighting soon. I think he fights, is it next weekend? It's soon. And um, maybe it's this weekend. I don't know. But he's fighting soon. <laughs> so, I don't know. Lemieux, Jacobs. I mean, Darrell hadn't fought in well over a year, so I'm sure he's going to look better on the next time out. But um, I really don't know where we're going to go. You know, I, I do. I would actually love to see Plant and Darrell this summer. Um, but I just don't see that happening because, you know, it's already March and April, May, June. You know, maybe there's fight. I don't know. I just don't see Caleb Plant taking a risk of hurting himself to miss out on the biggest payday and the biggest opportunity he's probably going to have as a boxer. You know what I mean? I, I understand from a fan's perspective, I am a fan. Um, just because I'm a part-time media member doesn't mean I'm not a fan and don't think like one as well. Uh, but in the same breath, it's just easy to say it. It's another thing to be in that situation. And if you got hurt, and it's so funny because a lot of these people that are saying, oh, come on, dude, don't wait eight months for Canelo. I get it, but you know, some of those same people would be dogging him if he got hurt. You know, I can't believe you, you fought a worse fighter, or he, let's say he, you know, outboxes Darrell easy. I'm not saying that would happen for sure. That's not what I'm saying, but let's say then they'd be like, oh, this is a garbage fight. You know, so you can't win for losing. You can't lose for winning. Is that Does that make sense? But anyway, um, we'll see. 
we'll see. But like I said, it, it, when I say uh, it's a stay busy fight or whatever, and I didn't, I didn't ever really mind this fight because you know he'd been off so long. I just didn't like the way it was the main event with two showcases. But like I said, once you see it in the ring, not that it was some spirited fight, but the bottom line, no matter what styles of fights there is, I do want competitive fights. So I can't sit there and go overboard in my complaints when it was a competitive fight. I didn't really think Davis won, but if I'm at seven to four, I'm okay with a the draw. Then I can't really, uh, you know, I couldn't really get too mad, right, at a at a draw or a seven to five, I should say, right, for uh, Davis. But anyway, that about wraps it up. It will be interesting to see if they just let Darrell go right with Benavides again, or, or maybe they'll call something else. They could, they could. Like I said, David Lemieux's out there. Go just look at the WBC rankings, and there is something there. You know, Benavides and Jacobs would be a fun ass fight. Um, but he fights, what, next weekend, right? Not this weekend, but next. So we'll see. Um, they're going to probably try to get him out in a you know a chunk of months uh, to, to kind of line him up in place there for that mandatory spot. Whenever that will be called, you know, you never know. Now, if, if he gets the Mando spot at some point, then he gets called and Canelo drops the belt again, then, then Benavides can be like, oh, what the hell? Why did he do that? You know what I mean? Because he was so worried about these belts now at 68, as opposed to, uh, you know, those belts at 160 at that time. So, um, that about does it. Like I said, for recap, pretty slow, mild weekend. It happens. Uh, March is not just jam packed, which is crazy fights because college basketball takes over. You know, this is the last week of college basketball as far as regular season. By next week. Midweek, the the college basketball, not the big tournament, but the conference tournaments start. And then the very next week, it's three weeks of that. So, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, getting too mad at March not being jam-packed, calm down a little bit. But we do have a bum-ass fight coming in a couple of weeks with uh, Juan Francisco Estrada and Roman Gonzalez. So hold your horses call down. Clarissa Shields does return uh, to action. Like I said, she had a I think it was like May she had a fight um, with uh, Maria Eve. Uh, is it Dakari? Dakari? Dakari, I think. She That's going to be on pay-per-view. You know, it's not great that it's on pay-per-view, obviously. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, either it's Tiafima Lopez and uh, Cambosos or, or, or Ruiz Areola, if that turns out to be true. But um, in this scenario, I understand why she's doing it. You know, she, she's not able to secure a date. Um, Showtime had been invested in, in her fairly well, I'd say, because she got the main events and all that. But uh, And she did have a, uh, a fight a while back that did good ratings, too. Uh, but, hey, she's got to do what she's got to do. You cannot pay for it. You can, like you said, when it comes to pay-per-view, we're going to talk about three separate pay-per-views today, minorly anyway. I'm not going to pretty go and predict them. It's the same. I'm just consistent. It's the same thing. You know, and, and I'm not here to tell you what how to spend your money. I, I can tell you how I'm going to spend my money. I can tell you maybe I'm in between on something. I don't know. Maybe I will. Uh, you know. Larissa Shields, this is a legit fight at the weight class, right? Um, we know that the the women's game side of boxing is not as deep. I mean, shit, the men's game is not as deep as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago either. But she's just in a weird position here for her. And weird is like a, a soft way to put it. So I can understand this. I think it's what is it? Twenty five dollars, twenty nine ninety nine, or twenty twenty four ninety nine, something like that. It's on Fight TV. Um, you know, she's got to do what she's got to do. She literally can't get a date, so they're taking a risk on pay per view. Um, and at least, like I said, it's a discounted pay per view. It's not a full price pay per view. So, um, she had to do what she had to do. Um, I don't like, you know, I mean, quality fights. 
you know, you'd have to register this as a quality fight at the weight class, obviously. Um, some people, you know, prefer a quality fight if it's on pay-per-view to be a male fight, right? Because they feel like that. They're just more into that. And that's okay, too. It, it's like, do you like, you know, NBA or WNBA more? I mean, that you know, it, it is what it is. Like, you either like women's fighting, you don't, or maybe you like some of it, some of it you don't. It is what it is. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and go too deep in this. But in this, if you're going to rip Clarissa too much on this one, well, here's the deal with all pay-per-views. You know, here's the key. You can just not pay for the fucking pay-per-view, too. Because you know the shit's going to be streamable. I'm not telling you to live stream, but uh, it is streamable, I'm sure. And you know it's going to be on YouTube before you know it, or Daily Motion or whatever, you know. All these pay-per-views end up like that. So that's just facts. That I'm not telling you to not to to break the law, you know. I'm just saying. I just try not to get caught up too much in this stuff because it is what it is. Just like the celebrity boxing YouTube stuff. You can just not pay for the fucking thing. That that pretty much solves it. I mean, what audience are they taking away from boxing if it's a pay-per-view and, and, it's, and it's YouTubers? How is that of hurting boxing? I mean, you know, they're not marketing towards every boxing fan. So... It is what it is. Um, I'm assuming Clarissa Shields will win the fight. Um, she's been off for a while, though. I'll say that. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully, who knows? Maybe this thing will do good enough. I don't, ex- you know, I don't expect that they're thinking that it's going to be great or anything like that. But hey, who knows? Maybe, you know, she, she like I said, if you look at some of her. Um, some of her ratings on Showtime have been good, man. I think one of the – she's just a big favorite in this one. I think it's like a plus – I think I saw it like plus 550, plus 600. Yeah, plus 500 is the lowest I've seen otherwise, plus 566, uh, plus 600. Um, you know, it is what it is. Like, it, like, like you say, I know. James Metcalf, Ted Cheeson, oh, that's – probably the closest fight of the weekend. Shouts out to the UK on that one. Um, and then actually tomorrow we do have a uh, Brandon Adams and is it Sirhai? Um, Bohachuk, I think it is. That, that might be interesting. Obviously Sirhai is the, the favorite there, but Adams is uh, somewhat of a dog there. I think he's well over two to one. Actually, let me check. The lowest one I see is plus 216 for Adams. Otherwise, it's plus 260, plus 255. So that could be good. And that's uh, on Ring City, USA, on MSM, or MSNBC. MS, what is it? Oh, MSNBC Sports Network, which is going to not exist here in a little bit. Just a heads up with that. Um. So like I said, this isn't a great weekend. We're not going to preview and predict everything. We don't have these great fights. But maybe Shields, you know, Clarissa and Maria Eve, maybe that'll turn out to be a really fun fight. Maybe Clarissa, this would be the time for her to get a knockout. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's going to happen. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm not really going to go over with the pay-per-view stuff on this because she literally didn't have – an opportunity. So if this works out, maybe she can continue to do this when she needs it. Maybe that'll draw interest. Maybe she'll be on one of these thriller cards in the future. You know what I mean? That would actually be dope for her. Too bad she, she didn't get that actually. Anyway, um, we got a variety of news. Variety of news. I mentioned that Pacquiao, Mikey Garcia stuff. Um, I got a little audio in, in, in a, I think it's a boxing scene article of, of talking about it. Um, so we'll talk about that. Tiafima Lopez, obviously, since the last time we spoke, you know, Triller paid six milli for that, um, you know, for the, the fight, which got him a lot more money. And it's no big surprise. I have gotten messages even just a little bit ago 
but during uh, the last couple of days in a variety of ways. Um, some people wondering if I'm going to pay for the pay-per-view, am I going to support it or not, or, or whatever. We'll get into some of that. Um, I think there's an in-between ground there um, that a lot of people won't like to be in between now. Oh, I can see that. I can see that. Either meet me halfway or, well, I can feel this way, but actually not do that. You know what I mean? And that's basically where I'm at. I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about that, but I do kind of want to focus on the potential uh, collusion stuff, the collusion attempts, uh, allegedly. Um, when I say allegedly, but, you know, um, I mean, Bob said a lot. He, he was talking about, well, you know, if Eddie or the zone bid for this, then that may affect, you know, um, the Fury Joshua, then he kind of backed off of that. Um, top rank, uh, DeBuff, Todd DeBuff, he actually emailed DeZone saying, what's this stuff I hear about, you know, uh, you guys are going to bid on this. And it sounds like he was saying, well, you know, we actually, instead of scheduling, you know, right on Canelo's date, May 8th, we moved our fight. And that's the Ramirez Taylor to May 22nd, yada, yada, yada. So I do want to get into some of this stuff because Tia Fimo is now saying I may be a free agent after this fight or the next fight because of a variety of things that he feels like he has proof of them colluding. And when it comes down to colluding, it's like if you're saying the zone or Eddie do not, you know, do not bid for this, well, that's kind of crazy, dude. You know, because you're now capping your fighters' money. And clearly they went over the zone, went o- or Eddie went over top rank. So you're going to sit there on one end and, and collude and say, hey, or allegedly collude, I should say. Um, you know, because it's got to be proven in the court or, in a, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, who knows? We'll see. We'll see where this goes. But. It is pretty funky to sit there and say, hey, um, you know, what the hell are you doing? You know, don't don't do it. We helped you out. Help us out here. Because that it's one thing to move a date. It's another thing to take away money out of your fighter's pocket. You see what I'm saying? So that's a little different. But shout out to Michael Coppinger. I give him a lot of heat because clearly he's heavy to zone in a lot of times. But he does break here's that in between thing hey i can give someone credit and also criticize them you know what i mean because it's it's worthy and warranted for both and he got it he had a great story um you know in general on this um, some people were surprised that triller came in late other people's like myself i didn't call triller like oh triller's gonna get in there and i didn't say that but there's no I, there's just no way tia Fimo was gonna talk all that shit and not no, somebody's gonna bid. You know what I mean? It just—it's just not. That's not how. It, you know what I mean? That's my opinion on that. Anyway, but I can also see, like I said, top rank looks like they were gonna go up to like 1.5. I think is what Tia Fimo would have gotten. Um, so that would have been, you know, a little bit more above his uh, 1.25 minimum. So and I can also see why they don't want to pay five or six million for this fight either, top rank. But from the sounds of it in a couple different interviews um, from Tia Fimo's uh, management, you know, his representation, they were saying, you know, it, it maybe would have been another 500000 and we would have, we would have given you a little discount, but you didn't want to budget all. So this whole thing has been messed up. And I think it, 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 it it's from this summer, a lot of it probably, um, you know, when you, when you say a take it or leave it, to your fighter in the biggest fight of his life, and then you get mad, and I'm talking about TFC against Loma, obviously. You say, oh, take it or leave it. They ended up giving a little bit more money. I think ESPN came up to close the deal, but it's like all he's doing is making up for the money he didn't make against Loma. It's not the – or he's going to be a free agent or he's proven his worth. And so, anyway, Trilla 
uh, landed it for over six million dollars. Eddie Hearn three point five, and I think Top Rank came in at two point three um, million. So um, it's a sixty five thirty five split. Top Rank gets twenty percent of his purse. That's right. You heard it, guys. This is not a pay per view that Bob is going to do. That's usually thirty percent, but he gets twenty percent. Um, so he made almost eight hundred thousand, and that's something he was saying. Hey, if you want to go ahead and you know buy out his contract, go ahead. I just made eight hundred thousand almost in in like you know what do you say in five minutes or something like that. That's Bob for you though, right? Um, so you know it, it is what it is. Like that that's that's what he's saying. Uh, that's that's what he's saying. So basically. Um, Tiafimo will get, wait a second, that doesn't seem right. Well, out of Tiafimo's 3.9, plus probably a combined 12%. This is from IDIC, uh, from the IBF, WBA, WBC, WBO, uh, 469,000. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, the fight is being discussed, by the way for uh, May 29th in Miami. Um, This was on Sirius XM Boxing Radio reported. Uh, Originally, it sounds like they were going to pair him with Oscar De La Hoya for a comeback fight at age 48, but I guess that's no longer a deal there. Hmm. I wonder what the zone was thinking. Maybe that's why it's no longer a thing. (laughs) You know, because... uh, Maybe that it had to be tied that way. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but um, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, Cambosos is going to earn um, 2.1 before, you know, um, Ludabella gets something too. Um, here's a couple of quotes from this. Bob Arum just announced, announced to not expect the same pay when I come back after this fight. And if that's the case, you might as well buy yourself out. It's crazy. This is a business. That's what Lopez told the Athletic. And if they can't treat their fighters or at least me in a way of respect, then I'll find somewhere else because I know what I'm worth. I'm very happy. I'm very thankful. But I'm hurt by this. He talked about his mother and father cried. Obviously, Triller knows my worth in a top rank. Or wait, oh, gave a wake-up call to top rank. Um. It goes on to talk about, you know, um, we want to show we're talk, uh, taking the sport of boxing seriously. This is from, Ka- uh, what is it, Kavanaugh? Um, and respect boxing. We're not trying to make a mockery of it. Uh, that's what this fight does. Um, Tia Fimo will, co- uh, uh, will come in with a half a million followers and leave with two million followers, that type of thing. Um, I don't think that there is really someone – of relevance that is really available of, of the statue or size uh, of, of Lopez that could be better. Take Tyson Fury, for example. I'm not going to get Tyson Fury more fans. He has a lot of fans he wants and, he wants and needs. He has all the fans. Oh, he has all the fans he wants and needs. Um, he's on the same list, but already up there. So basically, you know, he's saying that I'm not, we're not looking to sign all these fighters and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, Hearn, Hearn added, Eddie Hearn said, today was a great day for boxing because we realized the sport is hot. We realized there's more interest from new platforms, and that's great for the fighters. I'm sick and tired of hearing people disrespecting fighters when these guys, uh, you know, get that. When the, these are the guys that deserve it. So congratulations to Tia Fimo and Cambosos. Um, of course, you know, Eddie not long ago was saying fighters got to take less and all that. And we're going to pressure these managers and stuff like that. But I can understand why he, he, you know, chirped up at this one because it's like, screw you, you know. <laughs> um, but we did talk about how top ranks said, you know, they're, they colluded together and they didn't do anything illegal. But, you know, um, if anybody, sh- you know, should be pissed, it's us. Um, but a lot of it, you know, was a, a, about surrounding the IFL TV interview. Aram insisted that he would, uh, it was a threat kind of like Aram said, if Aram, you know, if he bid on it, it could impact, you know, 
the the fight with Fury and Joshua. So, and there was an email sent. Um, Todd DeBuff, like I mentioned, did send an email to Kevin Mayer, a, str- a strategic advisor at Access Industry, um, the primary show, uh, shareholder. God, this fucking thing is all at to sell. Um, so they're basically like, hey, you know, um, don't bid on the shit because we just helped you out by moving a fight that I'm going to talk about in a second, Taylor and whatnot, Taylor and Ramirez. Um, so, and they, there's emails going back and forth. There was some sharing of the emails back and forth. Uh, they were responding to it. Um, but, you know, it, it is kind of interesting how that works. You know what I mean? Um, so a purse bid is almost about locating the market is about locating the market, not manipulating the market so that people are forced to do your will. That's what uh, David McWater said about the email exchanges. I'm very disappointed. So many years of unregulation in boxing has resulted in a decline in the morality and ethics of the sport to where a major promoter who's the leading actor in the industry would send an email like this and believe that he was acting legitimately. There's no other industry where an act like that could be tolerated. I don't know about that. But anyway, it's, it, this shit's been going on. Like There used to be like three to like six people eating on a fighter uh, because they just kept selling his rights and stuff, managers would back in the day. So um, I don't know about now that it's all messed up. But I understand what he's saying. You know what I mean? Um, I get it. I totally get it. Um, Todd DeBuff, this is what is his quote. I'm gross. Grossly disappointed in the conduct of people who have shared emails and have put it to the press. He didn't say he was embarrassed about his. The value of the match is where, you know, it's what we bid on. Uh, this has nothing to do with top rank. It was an attempt to collude. Oh, it was an attempt to collude to create a riff between top rank and ESPN and the fighter. They were trying to make us look bad. We're sitting here saying, when are you going to call us? When are you going to have negotiations? 27 years in the business. I never thought uh, Oscar, Floyd, Manny, managers like Duncan, James Prince, Senior, Heyman. I've never seen conduct like that displayed by TFEMO representation, ever. Um, Eddie can bid all he wants, but if you're asking me to do things that for you, and we're talking about business together and things zone wants uh, to do internationally if you're asking more to expand so maybe that's why maybe that's why not as many it seems anyway uh, ESPN plus fights from the UK are popping off as much now maybe that's uh, maybe they're going to do a zone thing there so anyway um, you know they're I don't know we'll, we'll see you know we'll see man we'll see where this thing freaking adds up. Here's a little bit more, then I'll move on. Um, this is from uh, Kavanaugh from Triller. He says, uh, the Tiafima Lopez and George Cambosos as probably a um, a co-main event on a May card that would be paired with the influencer celebrity type. Um, we don't view them as undercards. It's just a matter of if we have a co-main event that brings different audience than them or not. Um, where it's for, oh, they're talking about uh, where it's for a signature title or significant title with a well-known talent and people that we think will attract the right audience. That's what he's saying. But but he doesn't necessarily plan on signing free agent boxers in the future. Kavanaugh said of uh, Lopez by bringing him on the card, the social media, the reach, the different stuff. He'll have you know three, four, five times the followers. The world of boxing obviously has a very diehard purest part of the sport. We're not trying to compete in that world. We're not trying to own the next boxer or find the next boxer. That comes from Mark Raimondi. Um, so those are some quotes as well. Um, so we'll see. You know what I mean? We'll see how that goes. Um, there is 34 minutes left of the live stream. You can call 646-381-4990. That's 646 646- Three eight one four nine nine zero. If you're listening to the browser in 34 minutes and nine eight seven seconds, um, you're gonna have to uh, call the number to listen to the show. Most people know that, but I figure I would at least. 
give you a little heads up on that just to make sure you remember that. So we'll see, man. I don't know how this collusion, I don't know if that's actually, would actually, you know, work out, you know. And I and, and actually, uh, Aram, <laughs> in that, I forgot to say this, but McWater has some fighters with uh, top rank. And this is what um, Aram continued to say. The kid and his father activated Triller. But McWater has some fighters who will fight very competitively. No more gimmies. Why should we spend hundreds of thousands to build fighters up and then that help is and then that help is for, forgotten? Which, you know, I mean, can't sit there and get too mad at him for that that part anyway. <laughs> um so yeah, that's uh remember you know, people are talking about this is the craziest purse bid. Jake Donovan brought this up, the uh, the Povek and Klitschko, $23 million <laughs> instead of $6 million. That was a huge one in 2013, so uh, don't forget about that one. Um, that That's that's pretty huge. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, Coppinger in on Sirius XM, Tiafimo were just letting them have it, saying, Todd Buff, Todd DeBuff, you won't uh, – you won't have me back. Get ready because we're going to war, you prick. How dare you try to cock block my purse bit with the zone and whoever else. You're done. Thank you, Triller, for letting me know that I'm next up or something like that. So, um, And Ray Diggs from Twitter, he was talking about, um, because, you know, this is Tia Fimo as well saying, you know, top, top rank gave me so much proof to get out of this contract. So he feels like he's going to be out of it. Uh, but Ray Diggs says discovery is a dangerous thing. Lots of interesting activity around the situation for all involved, including the media. And I think that is a key, key word there. We're going to meet up with a lawyer this week. I see myself this fight or next fight. I will be a free agent. There's so much proof for me to get out of this contract. They gave me the golden ticket. Todd DeBuff gave me the golden ticket. That's what he is saying. We'll see where that goes. Uh, that would be freaking super crazy if they ended up, you know, losing out on that. All right, we're going to go to Portland in just a second. Keith Eidick, um is talking about where this unif- – no, not just unification, but the undisputed Jose Ramirez versus Josh Taylor, May 22nd. We talked about that last week or the week before. And it'll be at an MGM property in Las Vegas. By the way, I'm just saying, book book them early. Not just for this fight. Maybe you're going to go watch, you know, the NBA playoffs in Vegas. I'm thinking about that maybe in June. I don't know. But uh, I had a couple of buddies that are going to go do that. But, the, I mean, the, the tickets are – I don't know the tickets for this, but the uh, – I can't imagine the airfare is too much right now. <laughs> and I know for a fact, just by checking a little bit, um, the hotels are super cheap. So it'll be at a property, MGM property in Vegas, whether that's the Grand Garden Arena, the Mandalay, the T-Mobile. Those are the options. May 22nd, 140-pound undisputed fight. Taylor and Ramirez. Like I said, I'm so, so happy. That's a good, good thing, no doubt about it. All right, I'm going to go to Portland, 503, and see what's going on with him. What's going on, Portland? How the hell are you, man? Yo, yo, what up? Hey, yo, what up, what up Chris? Uh, I'm doing good, you know, uh, here in uh, sunny, beautiful Oregon. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm doing good. How you doing, Chris? How's everything, brother? I'm doing good, man. The temperature uh, rose up to, like, it's still 46 degrees right now, uh, and it's nice. high of 40s the whole week, maybe hitting the 50s by Sunday. So it feels a lot better than, like, 13 straight days of uh, cold-ass weather, that's for sure. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Hey, I feel you guys, man. I, you guys, you were, you were talking about you guys get like that uh, real quick. Uh, you guys got that negative temperature, man. And, uh, you know, for a little bit, it got uh, really icy up here, man. Ice, like like thick ice, like really thick. And, uh, man, I've, I've, I've never experienced anything like that. But it's like, you know, that, that was insane, you know, for us. 
And, uh, man, I just, yeah. you know, I can feel what you go through year, year round, Chris, man. That shit is crazy. So, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we, we all live, luckily we all survived that shit here and, uh, everything as well. But, uh, but yeah, man, let's get into it. Oh uh, man, what can I say, man? Uh, I play the, the Mexican anthem. That's, that's my shit. And everybody knows Hell that. Yeah. that. That's for all the Mexicans. That's for the Mexicans, man. And the back-to-back Mexicans, man. That's what can I say? Let me, let me uh, can I, if I could get started real quick, uh, I just want to uh, recap uh, Brichette uh, Valdez, man. Um, that was an excellent fight. Uh, it was, it was awesome, man. Uh, I, I had, uh, on my Twitter, I put up um, Valdez. Uh, I thought he was going to win by a unanimous decision just because I thought he did have the better team, and I thought he was going to fight more smarter, uh, smarter, not not go balls to the walls like everybody thought they were. You know, they, like they thought it was going to be like a huge, you know, Mexican, you know, fucking Eric Morales, Barrera shit, uh, you know, style kind of right. thing. And, uh, uh, you know, but I, obviously, you know, Reynoso, man, shout out to Reynoso, man, and uh, – you know, the anthems for this guy, too, man. The, the, man, what, what a year he's having so far, this, you know, this first quarter. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, it's like uh, the, the anthems for them. And, um, uh, but, yeah, it's like it's insane, man. Uh, what can I say, man? Oh, but, oh, but the Valdez. Uh, the Valdez, yeah. So, uh, but, yeah, I, th- I thought he was going to fight smarter. I didn't think uh, he was going to go to war with Brichette. I thought that, that would have been dumb on his part. And uh, I liked how he chose his, uh, his shot beautifully. Like, that left hook was nice. It was there every yeah. time he, uh, you know, came forward. Um, Brissett, I mean, what a – man, that was a brutal knockout. I mean, Jesus. Huh. Uh, all of the air. Uh, luckily, you know, he was he's okay now. Uh, everything's fine. And uh, But, man, I like – man, that was like, that, that's like – that's that Pacquiao, you know, stopper. You know what I mean? That like, that front mm. face, you know. You know what I mean? Like, dude, that's, yeah. that's that kind of knockout is scary, bro. And uh, But, you know, shout out to Valdez. Uh, shout out to Brissett, man. That kind of fight, that, too, you know what I mean? To do it in your toughest yeah, that fight as a pro, to put that performance and to end it like that, man, he really stepped up to the plate, did Oscar Valdez here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's funny, man. It's like it's like it's like no one's ever seen a Valdez fight. Like I like I kind of like I had more. Uh, I definitely had more. Like I believed in him more a little bit more just because he's coming off pretty good. He he fought in the bubble. Everything was fine, and uh, I just thought Brichette, You know, you know. Um, he had that one fight that came in no contest, and he was coming like not really, really looking good. And plus, if I could say something, that wins, man. I saw him sucking down that water, so I was like, oh, dude. Yeah. Once I saw that, I was like, yes. you know, uh, that's a game changer. I put that's some money changer, on Veldas after that. I put some money on Veldas. Nice. After that. I was like, oh, dude. Oh, nice. Dude, Hell yeah, Chris. He doesn't look good. He doesn't look good at all. Yeah. That's a good call. <laughs> Yeah, bro. It's always about the wins. You know, you got to check them out. You got to watch everything, man. The lead up, how they're feeling, everything. Like, and it's cool, too. If I could shout out to, to Top Rank, like, they kind of, um, in all honesty, they kind of took the idea of what the uh, UFC was doing with the, uh, I think it was called un, uh, Untitled or un, un, un something, un, Unbedded. I, I think it was Unbedded where they get into uh, the, the camps during fight week and then lead up to the weigh-ins and all that. And uh, I believe, you mm-hmm. know, Top Rank took that with ESPN and stuff. And it was pretty cool. Like, I like that idea, like, that, that whole thing. We got to see the camps and everything. And uh, I don't know, it was pretty cool. So, uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, but that weigh-ins kind of told me everything, you know. It was, it was nice. But shout-out to shout out to Valdez, shout-out to Bichette. There's no real loser. It was just it was a great fight. Um, you know, shout out to both of them, you know, both of both are winners to me, you know what I mean? It's, it's always Mexico. But also, man, let's talk about the real Mexican, uh, Canelo. Uh, what can I say? Uh, he looked excellent in this fight. Uh, it only went three rounds, right? And, uh, you're done. You know, and then before, man, I, I, I remember when, um, when like the zone, like, uh, you know, didn't want this fight on when he was with Golden Boy, and I thought that was a dumb idea because, like, they could have just taken the belt and they could have done this, like, last year or whatever. So it's just, I don't know, but uh, I, I like it. Uh, you know, and, and it's funny, too, how, how even with Canelo having this fight, like, if he still gets criticism, like, from, you know, a bunch of, like, casual fans. And especially, I don't know if you guys can see that uh, interview, Chris, uh, in, um, uh, yeah. and uh, it was in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that one? Get the with fuck those out man. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's coming, dude. That, that's so casual. Like, I hate casual, like, sports announcers talking and being able they, – they should be checked by their, you know, superiors and, you know, their outlets. To, they got to be checked before they, they they insult these athletes, man. It's like it's insane. Like, how how are you able to get that? And we know boxing. We watch this thing. You can't just sell this just because you had so much hate for Canelo. And what's up with all these Mexicans hating Canelo, man? That's, like, that's so, like, just so upsetting. Like, man, this is our guy, man. This is our Michael Jordan, man. This is our guy right now. And we got we to gotta represent. We got to like this guy and love this guy, man, and, and always uh, give this guy our, our support, man. And um, 
But yeah, I mean, I just that interview was so um, so lame in my opinion. That guy, I, I, the the guy, I, I don't remember. He's kind of got a kind of weird long name, but um, but the the way he keeps bringing up Triple G, and it's like, bro, it's like it's enough. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it's, I don't know. It's, it's insane what Canelo has to go through. But hey, in all honesty, too, shout out to Canelo too for bringing out all the. The like the big boxers, like you know the like the big guys, right? Charlo, Terrence, I think I believe like there yeah, are so awesome. many like those A side level boxers at that fight, and that was not even like a name versus Canelo. In that the was musical year act, you know I mean? like, too. I mean, yeah, in the musical yeah, that, act, that too. too, dude. They put on a yeah, show. Yeah, that too. Shout that. out to him. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to that man. He put, and that was kind of cool, you know. In all honesty, I thought, uh, you know, the, this change was uh, was kind of cool for, you know, because obviously it was in Miami. He brought that Miami uh, Latino, uh, you know, brought the Mexicans, yeah. uh, you know, out there and everything. So he had to bring the more of the East Coast flavor. And it was it was cool, you know. What I mean, it was cool to me. You know, what I mean, as long as that anthem was there, you know, what I mean, the anthem was there at the beginning. So that's all that. <laughs> that's what's important. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, shout out, shout out to Nello for bringing out all the. You know what I mean? That, that was a full house. It seemed like a, a prize fight. You know, they, I mean, it, it is a prize fight. But um, I mean, he, he like Canelo could fight. You know, like a bunch of seaside level fighters, and and he would just he would sell out. It, he people would show up. It, that's just the that's the level of respect that Canelo has in the sport of boxing. Like it, dude. Like let's face it, man. That's it. That's what it is, man. And it's funny how he gets a lot of hate, a lot of criticism from casuals. And uh, but yeah, man, it's it, it's insane. But shout out to Canelo, man. Shout out. Shout out to and also shout out to Eddie Hearns, man. He's uh, over there wearing pajamas, you know, at like at weigh-ins and uh, <laughs> Eddie, at, at press conferences. I about you know, that. he's so comfortable. He he's so Miami comfortable now. On, yeah, hell yeah, he's, he's so comfortable now. Get <laughs> you know, like you know, in business with Canelo. And, and in all honesty, too, the, the business seems well, uh, you know, way better than any uh, than the uh, relationship with, in my honest opinion, with uh, De La Hoya. Like Eddie Hearns seems to be pretty cool with you know Canelo. You know, it looks like uh, wasn't he the, his, their, his boy BJ Sounders is next, and and, and dude, and it looks like Canelo's taking care of all the UK. You know, he's taking care of all the all the fighters. Yeah, in the he's UK going right all to the Euros, dude. He's taking he's gonna yeah, take man. Eddie's whole roster for Euros, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, man, and it's awesome, man. It's it's cool to me, it's man. Smart, I, got, I got nothing but respect. I think Canelo. that's really smart. You know, because it's like they're all on the zone. You can all make the fight. Um, it's big ass money just run them all down. Like, I, I think it's a really smart idea. And it, just to double up on what you're saying, CT, or like, dude, I just don't understand. Like it's some people saying, Oh, he's not busy enough. Then when he gets busy, then he's fighting a shitty fight. You know what I mean? It's like, which one is it, dude? Do you want him busy or not? We already know his next fight. We already know he's fighting Caleb plant in September. And he's saying he wants to fight December or January. So is this really a bad deal? Like, come on, dude. No, it's an awesome deal, man. We get Canelo maybe four times. Luckily, you know, uh, knock on wood that you know n- no injuries, no BS, and uh, hopefully this uh, uh, the pandemic that we're going through right now, everything is pretty smooth. Um, everything is you know okay. Uh, but I don't know as far as you know if everything goes well. Uh, you know, I would like to see Canelo four times, and I like like you. And for me, I don't have any criticism for him. He could fight. He could go fight like. That a uh, YouTuber dude, if he wants to, and I'm, I'll watch it. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's cool, <laughs> hey, man. You know, yeah. I mean, I got, I got nothing but love and respect for Canelo. To me, he's, he's still number one, no matter what anybody says, no matter what, yeah. no matter what ESPN puts out there, no matter what, uh, whatever boxing outlet, casual outlet, Yahoo.com, CNN, whatever they're saying, they, they bring up Triple G. <laughs> Just ignore it because it doesn't make sense, you know. And uh, Canelo's doing better, bigger and better things, man. And, uh, you know, that's for the sport of boxing, man. And it's, and it's awesome, too. There's a guy representing, you know, Mexico, you know, uh, you know me, Mexicans, you know what I mean? So, it's like, it's, it's, it's awesome to me, man. It's, a, it's about representing. This is to me uh, about because I love boxing and, you know what I mean? And we got one, man. We got this guy. And Canelo, man, he's, he's so far is the, the man of boxing right now so uh shout out to him and everything but uh but yeah man as far as that uh what we got this weekend if i could comment real quick uh oh, clears the shield it's, it's on friday i believe and uh you know i i'll be at work i'm sorry i, I do want I, I think I, I will buy it i'm gonna uh, support it so uh shout out to clears the shield hopefully everybody listening uh you know let's support this this girl you know this uh this athlete this this awesome person uh you know i mean because she does get a lot of negative you know uh uh you know out you know uh opinions out there and uh, I don't know, just you know, show love to these fighters, man. If they're, you know, it's pay per view, it's not that much. Let's do it. 
you know, let's, let's, let's all watch and, uh, you know, support this, you know, because, um, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, she's going to go fight MMA, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, let's uh, see how far, you know, let's, let's try to keep her in boxing. But as far as that, Chris, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, don't have too much to say. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, Viva Ropa Dope Radio and Viva Mexico. And peace out. Appreciate it. That anthem came in just perfect. Yeah, it's twenty nine ninety nine. Just so people know, just a reminder, it is twenty nine ninety nine. So all those people that want the cheaper pay per views, here you go. You got one. Twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, Friday. So it's on Fight TV, uh, like on the app Fight. So F I T E, by the way. Um. So yeah. <laughs> Man, it is so funny. So I'm now I wasn't even done with the shit just yet. I got other news to talk about. Javante Davis, Manny Pacquiao, Mikey Garcia, but every <laughs> man, I I don't know this person's name. Otherwise, I probably would mention it. I try not to mention too many names unless I know them, um, or like, um, they're media or part-time media, then I'll mention your name more than likely. But um, I don't know this person's name, but they're, they're saying I'm ducking the Tio Fimo thing. You said you're going to say your stuff on pay-per-view. Say it now. You're, you support the pay-per-views for the PBC, but now you're not going to support the pay-per-view for Tio Fimo. Okay, let's talk about that since we're right here. Uh, okay? Okay, so you can be both, right? Tio Fimo didn't make in my mind in many people's minds it's pretty obvious he didn't make he didn't get enough money to fight Loma that's clear dude <laughs> like this is it and he knows it you know he knows it and he did it on purpose because he wanted to take the fight well he didn't want to do that but he took the fight you know even though his promoter dogged him to the media said take it or leave it if you if you leave it if you don't take it we'll have you fighting you know a, a man a uh, 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 you know, a random dude for freaking three hundred thousand dollars. So take it. Just basically shitting on him. Sounds like ESPN are actually the ones that popped up a couple hundred thousand and they made the fight. So now for him to come back and make this kind of money on a stay busy fight, mandatory, it evens it out. So I'm happy for Tiafima Lopez. Good for you. I understand why Top Rank wasn't going to bid six million for this. Nor, nor do I think they should have, really. But it does sound like there was some in-between. What was it, 1.5? Is that what I said? Is, that's what it would have turned out on his bid, I think. Um, on, on top ranks bid, I'm saying, for Tia Fimo. Because his, his, his minimum now is 1.25, and he signed that going in. And that's why I talked about it last week. I understand Bob, you know, Bob Arams and Todd DeBuff's point to an extent. Because, hey, man, we... The last fight, we negotiated this minimum. So we're giving you your minimum. Obviously, they gave you a little bit more. Um, but it does sound like, like I mentioned, that he could have, maybe if they put it, put it to $2 million, he would have they would have settled. I don't know if that's true. That's what the, uh, the, the manager said. You know, maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Um, but as far as, like, I'm happy for him, dude. He got paid. He, he put it up there. I, I, I mentioned Triller as one of the, the folks that could pick it up. I mentioned DAZN. Um, maybe there was somebody else out there potentially that he was talking to or whatever. Um, and by the way, it's not colluding for a fighter and a manager, especially a manager, to see how much someone's willing to, you know, to pay you. You know, it's a purse bid. That's the whole thing. And, you know, these purse bids would be more important if the rankings wouldn't suck so much. You know what I mean? Um, but I can I can respect him. I, I, I can look at his hustle and go, yes, Tia Fimo, that's dope, dude. That makes up for some of that money you didn't make with Loma. And I can also say that I'm not buying the pay-per-view. I'm not going to now celebrate a pay-per-view that is a stay-busy mandatory fight. As far as what I think of pay-per-views, I need the, the you know, I need it like, to be a top level fight in my mind. That that's just that's just how I go about it. We we go down this pay per view a bunch, this topic. Okay? 
And just so you think that I'm not showing to the PBC, the Ruiz Areola fight we're going to talk about later in the show. I already mentioned that. So I actually tweeted it about today, too, if you don't believe me. Um, May 29th in Miami is when that sounds like that's going to happen. The co-feature, or they're saying the co-main, you know, the dueling main, will be a celebrity. Now, like a YouTube celebrity something, right? Um, so, you know, maybe it's a YouTuber that my nephews know. Then I could maybe, maybe I would watch it with them, you know. But on the surface, you know, Lopez and Camposos, not a pay-per-view main event for me personally. So I can, like I said, I'm not knocking his hustle. Do you? But also, don't knock my hustle. Like, if well, not a hustle, but, you know, if everybody has their own, what they are willing to pay for and what their standards are, whatever it is. And this is boxing, so there's not a lot of standards. But I just don't look at Tiafima Lopez making a standard defense. I'm not taking anything from Cambosos. I think Tiafima wins it easy. It is what it is. It's not a close fight on paper. I don't need that as a main event in pay-per-view. You know? I don't need the co... I'm not a big fan of a co-feature of a celebrity fight. But I get it. I understand why he's doing it. I think it's a really smart move. So that's not hating. It's not hating not to pay. Why why do I need to pay for the pay-per-view? He's already made his money, dude. No, I'm not saying that there's not something in it more for him. Maybe there will be on the back end. I have no clue. I have no clue about that. But he already made a bunch more money than he would have for a fight that's like a stay busy-ish. So it's a little bit more than a stay busy. I'm not trying to rip Camposos, but, you know, it is what it is. So, so why, at the end of the day, Triller is a mar- – is, they have a marketing budget that's crazy. They have a ton of celebrities and influencers – that they use, and that's what that's what you know makes it a, a different show for them. He is being exposed to a different audience. It just is. And actually, Aram, this is off of uh, boxing scene when he was talking about that buyout. You can buy out the contract, and if you want. But he was also saying to them that you know um, we're not mad at them because it's different. He said it's it's terrific and wonderful that Triller put in a bid the way they did. I hope it works out for them. Because we made a lot of money, you know, in five minutes, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he said, well, it's, you know, it's not a Valdez Burchelt fight or whatever. And that's true, too. Triller is spending this money in effect as a marketing. Their model is different. Our model is different. We do 30 events a year. If they come into the market for real boxing and create, inf- and create inflation with um, pay-per-view shows, so be it. Everyone makes good money. So that's what I'm saying. Like, he's going to make a lot of a lot of money on this. So why do I have to, when he says support his move, he already's making a ton for this dude, you know? So it, mission accomplished, you know, mission accomplished, but I'm not here to buy this pay-per-view. I don't think that's me being not a dick or not supporting boxers or you're talking about PBC. I, well, yeah, I think pack, uh, Pack against Thurman or Spence against Porter or, you know, uh, I think Wilder Ortiz part two turned out to be a good pay-per-view, the undercard too. Yeah, I, I support those fights more than I support others. I think those are bad pay-per-view fights. The Charlo Brothers pay-per-view, was that bad? Do you think that's a bad pay-per-view? I don't. <laughs> I think it was a great pay-per-view. So I find it funny that parts of the media – are, are are so happy that Tia Fimo and now they're going to pay for a pay-per-view, but then they shit on quality pay-per-views. That's the only thing I've ever said is just be consistent. So I don't think that's me being, you know, contradicting. I say if the main event's not worthy, then that's it. And remember, the undercard, I don't know what the undercard is, but I know the co feature is not going to be, it's going to be a celebrity fight. They already said it. So... But on the same breath, I'm not mad at Triller and other these these places because this platforms. I don't. It is what it is. Like if they can help a young fighter like Tiafimo go over there and get some followers and 
you know, put him in a new, uh, in front of a new, you know, audience, that's awesome. I know for a fact that my my nephews and their friend on some of these undercards, I think that's his own undercard, uh, you know, um, with the Pauls fighting. Was Billy Joe Saunders on that one? Was Andre? I can't remember. Was Haney? Something, but they started talking about these guys. Well, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. And they followed him on social media, and they, they know him more now. Now, one of my nephews knows boxing pretty well already, but the other ones don't. But, you know, it's – it's. I don't look at it as this major threat, like, oh, my God, it, it, like the game's getting fucked up now. It's two different markets, dude. Just don't buy the pay-per-view, and then you don't have to worry about it. I just don't think that's a weird thing. Like, are you going to – Buy Logan Paul's next pay-per-view? You don't like the fight on pay-per-view? Who cares? Then don't buy it. They're not putting it for you then. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. They're not They're not making it from you. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and keep talking about this. For those addressing, you know, they're messaging me on this. It's like, especially one person that I just don't know the name. But it's like, dude, just because I'm not buying it doesn't, you know, I, I'm taking a hard pass. Deal with it. Speaking of this here co-feature stuff in pay-per-view, I believe Gervonta Davis, um, I feel like, I don't know if there's enough writing on the wall or what, uh, Gervonta said, I'm starting the summer off with a bang, fight announcement coming in a few days, I'm about to do some spectacular shit. That's what Gervonta said. We heard something about June as well. Um... And also, Ryan Garcia's manager was talking about, um, you know, that the fight is close. So maybe that fight is on again. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know if it is or not. But I wouldn't doubt if, because it sounds like Showtime is now getting involved based off Logan Paul's statement. Uh, for the Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul fight that got postponed, it sounds like Showtime potentially is involved with it. That's that's what it sounds like with Logan Paul. He was talking all sorts of silly shit, Logan Paul, though. He's like, I think HBO and Showtime are in on it. And, you know, I don't think HBO would just come back for this randomly. But he also said Al Heyman announced it. Oh, did he? <laughs> Al Heyman went on Showtime and announced it. Is that That's what he did? Al, Al Heyman went on Showtime, or any camera for that matter, with a mic? And announce something? <laughs> Come on, dog. But the fact that he's talking about it, you know, lends it. Long story short, I think this is just my personal opinion that Gervonta Davis, you know, he, he was actually rumored with Mares. Um, we've heard him talk about, or we've heard Lomachenko potentially, actually with Carcino. I just, I, hey, speaking of the devil, there it is. There's the guy, Carcino, about to go to you in a second. Or is he going to fight Ryan Garcia? I don't know. But what I do know is, well, I shouldn't say I do know, but I'm thinking that Gervonta Davis may be the co-feature on the Mayweather-Logan Paul card. And that's a way to prop him up even more and to make it a bigger deal. Now, maybe there's just so much money tied in that top of that event that it, that's not how it's going to go down. And Gervonta will have his own date. Maybe he is going to fight, you know, a Ryan Garcia or a Lomachenko or something big like that. I could also say, see Gervonta Davis against Abner Mares, uh, you know, on that co-feature. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure on that. Um, but yeah, that that's that's. It sounds like it, just in general, it sounds like the PBC is about to announce. Uh, a lineup, whether that's just Showtime lineup, whether that's Fox 2, I don't know. But it could be it could be right now. Maybe I went to Boxing Senior, it would pop off, maybe be at the end of the week, maybe in a couple of weeks, I don't know. But they are close. I know from more than one source um, that they literally were like two opponents away from being able to launch their schedule. And I believe that to be Showtime. But I don't know for a fact whether it's Fox or Showtime or it's going to be a combination, whatever. But there are, they are going to order some fights. And speaking of, um, or not order, you know, announce. Um, 
speaking of, Texas is about to be wide open. And when I say wide open, I mean wide open. Um, the governor just opened it up 100%. Does that mean it's 100% at Cowboy Stadium then? Is that what he's saying? 100% everything? He also said there's not going to be a mask mandate. Now, obviously, I think a, a certain business could still have a mandate for a mask. Uh, actually, I don't know that to be 100% back, but I believe you could. Um, but, I, you know, look for some fights. To, I mean, Texas and Florida was already popping off, especially Texas. Um, but now if it's wide open where you can just sell the whole place out, that's a whole different ball. Um, so that might be what they're waiting to for. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. Um, there is under three minutes left of the live stream. 646-381-4990 is the number to call. If you're listening to it in the browser right now on Blog Talk, give that number a dial. This 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 number, 646-381-4990, and that will allow you to listen to the rest of the show. I see some folks coming in here in the last few minutes. Welcome. Um the ones that I already know what's up, I'm pretty sure. There are a couple numbers that I don't totally recognize. If you want to press one and join in, that's cool. Otherwise, I'm about to go to Carcino. I see Wood just popped on, too, it looks like. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mentioned that Mikey Garcia, um, you know, in Pacquiao fight. Mikey Garcia, actually, this is from Boxing Scene, but it's actually from a video. Um, he's saying, you know, we finalize, we're finalizing all the details. We hope to get an exact date location in the next few days. Joe or Joe, yeah, Joan Anaker, I think it, it was, it was in a spontaneous chat in a vehicle. I think it was an Uber actually. Um, and I'm actually 90 seconds. Like I said, I'm actually going to play what she posted online in the Uber. Okay. All right, we've got a special up close exclusive with Mikey Garcia here, who is, of course, going to be fighting Pacquiao. When are you fighting Pacquiao, Mikey? Well, we're uh, finalizing all the details, but um, we hope to get, get the data exact in the next few days, get an exact date, um, location, everything. We'll we're done. looking at May, right? Well, we're, we're trying to get everything done for May. Um, I mean, it's been in the works for a long time. It's been in the works for, for a few years, and particularly more, more, more uh, in detail in the last year, uh, right before COVID, uh, you know, happened. But uh, now, you know, in the last few weeks, you know, about a month or so, we've been getting very close to, to working on this, to fin- finalizing this. And I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. We'll have, we'll have the, 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 all, all the details say in, in the next few days, a matter of time. Um, so far, it seems like all the parties are on board, and I'm, just, I'm excited for it, you know. And so... That sounds like that has got a good chance of happening. So we'll we'll see. We'll see just in general. There are a couple of items that we'll get to on the back end of this. I'm going to go ahead and go out to Carcino in Chicago and see what's going on with him. So switchboard, there we go. Hey, what's going on, Carcino? How the hell are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Just been busy. Just been super busy. You just hit the ground running when you got back from Florida, huh? Oh, you wouldn't even believe, man. I've been first <laughs> out. I've hit like three jackpots at the casino. So I'm just like, yeah, it's it's been nuts. I'm like, what? I won again? Then <laughs> <laughs> bringing over tax forms. I'm like, man, I gotta pay taxes on this. Yeah, right. That's when you know you won. <laughs> when you got to start yeah. paying taxes on something, you know. Yeah, I won about ten grand in one like first four days. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Well, now I can pay bills off. They're gonna get me. <laughs> so what's going on, okay. man? There's a lot Tell to me. talk about. In a variety of ways, uh, a lot, a lot of stuff going on in the world of boxing. The the Josh Taylor uh, Jose Ramirez fight is officially going to be in Vegas May 22nd at some sort of MGM 
um, you know, property. Um, we got a couple of different things. Tiafimo obviously uh, got paid. A um, lot, lot of stuff going on. I just played the audio about Pacquiao and Mikey Garcia, a fight that we thought would happen last summer, a fight that, you know, when you saw Spencer Garcia fight, you know, in the ring, he did kind of feel like, okay, so I'm I'm here for Mikey. What's going on, Spence? No, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I could fight you, but I'm probably going to fight Mikey. That's the way it kind of felt when they asked him. But here we are. That might be the fight. Um, Canelo's fighting Billy Joe Saunders next. Where do you want to start here, sir? You got anything uh, that you uh, would like to talk about? Oh, man, it's uh... – they got so many things revolving around, man. I'm just so – boxing just really it – this, it, this is the worst time of boxing that's ever been. And, and I mean, not just for the fighting, you know, because of the pandemic. This is the, besides that. All of this Internet stuff has really ruined the sport. Everybody's promoting – I'm going to fight this guy two weight classes up. I'm going to fight this guy down. Everybody's writing about it, talking about it. Then they go on a no, whole nother guy, or they don't even fight that person at all. These guys never fight. It's like, <laughs> it's like then you're like, okay, well, this fight's going to get done. They're right here. Next thing you know, that don't happen. It's, this is the worst time it's ever been for the sport. It, it's really, really bad. Like, as far as, it's like, I don't even, when a guy say, oh, they're going to fight, I'll be like, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I got to um, hear it like, officially announced instead of just right. on Twitter or on video. That, yeah, yeah that, it's very true. It. You can't trust it then. You know, Teofimo Lopez, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with him. Like, he, he's mad at, he's mad at Todd DeBow for trying to block him or something. Um, you know, talking about his purse bid, then he was going with Triller, and I'm I'm like, so I'm like he tried to block it. I'm like, well, it's a purse bid, and they, I mean, they're gonna do, they're gonna try to get the fight and secure the fight before, it, you know, it has to go to purse bid if they can. But if it goes to a purse bid and they want to outbid him for the fight, let them. So now Triller won the purse bid and paid. Six million dollars for a fight that's worth about one. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see six million dollars in Teofimo Lopez versus George. Uh, what was it? What was he fighting? Wasn't it Cam Bolso or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's just mandatory. Right, Teofimo getting four million for the fight, and I'd be, I would be shocked if George walks away with two. So I'm like, what in the world? He's getting $4 million. And if I'm top rank, I'm like, I'm not paying that. Not for that fight. That's crazy. So it's like it's this company built you up, promoted you, did their job, and now you put you in the fight, or the biggest fight in your life with Lomacheco, and you win the fight. And you're the man. And the first thing you do is dump on the company. You want to go run off and go go for the bag. And who knows what Triller's going to do. Triller's trying to build themselves up. They're not even a boxing company. So I don't know. But it's everybody's like free agents now, and they're just running around to whoever got money. And they're not even concerned about fighting the names that like look I wanna fight the best. If you're gonna pay me four million dollars to fight a bum, then this is what I'm gonna do. And this is the danger of the zone and and what uh other companies do. Like Todd Rank put in a bid for what, two point three million or something like that? Yeah, I would have paid him like one point five over his one point two five uh Mando uh minimum right. I should say. So Right. So and then Eddie Hearn put in almost uh what do you have five million? Uh, yeah, or like now, three something. He overdid that. Yeah, he went over them. I know that much. Right. And and you understand that because that's what the fights were. 
Bob knows what this fight is worth. I'm, that's all I'm going. I'll be like, look, I hope you're not going to put up any more money. This is it. I'm not going to watch, like, all these uh, events. Like, like um, the fight with Canelo this week. Like, I knew what that was. That was, look, I'm going to get a fight, an extra fight in. I've been out for another year. I did, did a fight. Right. I'm coming back and doing another fight. I'm like, Canelo just fought. And then he just came back and had another fight in May in, in uh, Miami because they got a lot of money from um, – oh, they put the money up big time. So Eddie Hearn was making a killing putting that fight together. So that Indian guy he beat up who I, I saw get beat up before, you know, that style of boxing is never going to beat Canelo. If you got the high guard, you can forget it. You're really going to lose. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a matter of yeah, time he didn't put before up much he was of a knocked fight. out. I think he threw like 20 punches maybe. <laughs> right. And, you know, everybody's like, hey, he's got to fight better competition. I'm like, this guy's going to fight Billy Joe Saunders. You, I mean, Canelo has earned the right to take a tune-up. Yes, of course. He just, like I mean, you said, he just fought, the, down. He fought 10 weeks ago. You know, it's like, exactly. didn't you guys want this, Carcino? Is this is what they wanted? We got to be more active. We got to be more. So it's okay when Golovkin fights the random dude off HBO. That's just staying busy. But when Canelo does it, nah, he's the he's the pound for pound. He He's fighting bums now. Right, and I'm like, you know the guy's in the fight, Billy Joe Sonny. The thing about it is if Canelo says he's getting ready to fight somebody, I believe him. Because he's getting ready to That's fight him. And I'm like, <laughs> And if he says, I'm not going to fight him, <laughs> then there's a good chance he's not going to fight that dude, you know? Exactly. But when he's like, hey, Billy Joe Saunders coming up in May 8th, they got the date and everything else, I'm expecting to see Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, uh, September Canelo, fight I can trust too, it sounds like. Sounds like he already knows the September fight, too. So it's like, what are we complaining about? Right. And it's like, well, look who he's fighting next. And I'm like, why would you sit there? Well, he needs to fight better. I'm like, well, he's got his schedule already set. So I don't even see the problem there. And as far as all the other fights like they got coming up uh, in May, I think they got the – you just brought that up that they had the fight yeah. coming up in May. Taylor and Ramirez. Yeah. Yeah, with Taylor. That's going to be a great fight. Yeah, like this. Uh, we don't – yeah. That's and a 50-50. We're gonna hear who, Oh, definitely. Then we're going to hear Tank fighting in a couple of days. Like, I, I got to check with uh, Bob Aaron because they were working on doing the fight with um, having that be Lomachenko's comeback fight. And they were going to do mm. a pay-per-view, but they were, because of COVID, they were trying to wait to, you know, get as many people in for that as possible because they wanted to do a pay-per-view. So Bob Arum and Floyd was in contact and things were looking good to making that, you know, the fight. And they're going to do it at 130, so that would be perfect. They want Loma to check at 130. Tank can make 130, he says. So they wanted to definitely make that fight. And, you know, that would have been a great fight for each guy. Floyd believes Tank can stop Loma Checo and get him out of there. And... Lomachenko believes Tank is Taylor made for him. So, you know, he he kind of didn't want to go down and wait, but they convinced him top rank, like, that this is best for you, is not to fight at 35, is to fight at 30. So they want Nice to move payday, down. too, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, that's a pay-per-view fight. People would buy that. The boxing world would want to see it. It makes sense. Now, mm-hmm. the fight I would really want to see that would make sense if you don't do that is Gary Russell Jr. Javante Davis mm. versus Gary Russell Jr. is more appeasing to me at 130. And that's going to bring a lot to the table. You're fighting somebody who's got experience, he's got speed, don't have the power you got, but he's got the other intangible. So let's see, because Javante is bigger than, than Russell Jr., but it don't really matter when you got skill. You know, it, it'll be a good fight because Russ, Gary Russell Jr. has always been a bully type of guy. So let's see what happens, you know. 
But yeah, I would like that fight. I would like that a lot. Well, that's a lot a fight of fight. Fight. And in that area right. too would be a big fight, you know. Where they're from, right. Baltimore, D C but on pay per view, which they're gonna want to put that, it would probably die. It would die out on pay per view. Because it hasn't been marketed right and you know, it hasn't been set up right, no time to really promote that. Sure. Where people would run out and buy it on pay per view, the casual still. But everybody else, they'd be like, oh, I don't know. You know, this guy is, you know, they just build and tank up really right now to be that guy, you know, so. Do you think it would end up yeah. on a co-feature of Mayweather and Logan Paul? What, what, what's the potential of that? Just because, hey, it would help to get that, that blow up, you know, just like him. People still know Gervonta from the Mayweather-McGregor uh, fight. I'm not saying it's going to be that big, but um, – do you think that's a possibility, or do you think that maybe the Mayweather Logan Paul just has so much money in the top end that it's going to be hard to to put a quality fight on the go feature? I don't think so. I think it's very. Uh, I mean, I think it's very reasonable that that could be, actually be the date. Like they could put that fight right on the undercard of it because they try yeah. to do their own pay per view. You know, it might be bad numbers. I'm looking at Leo Santa Cruz and. And um, Tank, and that didn't really do strong numbers. It did good numbers, but not strong. Like it was decent for them, but yeah, it, it didn't blow really it out. It wasn't like five hundred thousand or something like that. Right, and you're looking at the fact that Al Heyman is not risking his money, and I'm like, he's not doing it. He's like saying y'all are going to do this, and everybody's talking about this fight that's coming up on pay-per-view that they're freaking out about it. He's like, are you serious? It's going to make the main event Chris Ariola. He's like, are we really getting that fight? And I'm like, I, mean, I guess so. Yeah, Chris I mean, Ariola's it, it, fight is going to be on pay-per-view. And he's like, Chris Ariola is supposed to be retired. I'm like, yeah, well, he got bills to pay. So I'm like, you know, he was well, gonna keep I, I knew this up. Ruiz Ariel fight would happen, but it was supposed to happen on on normal Fox originally. So when you hear that it has a chance, I mean, obviously it's not announced yet, but when you hear it has a chance to be on pay per view, I mean, the amount of fifty fifties you'd have to put on that undercard. I mean, I just I don't know, man. It's it's one of those, you know, go to a theater. If they stack it with fifty fifties, you know, other than that, I thought that was just like a good comeback fight off of a loss. He's been out of the ring for what, fifteen months or something like that. That's a good T yeah. V fight for Fox. You know what I mean? Just like, hey, they're gonna fight, they're gonna brawl, it's gonna be fun, and then move on to your next fight. But um that's the rumor. You know, that is the rumor that uh that it's gonna be on pay per view April twenty fourth. Uh Figueroa, Omar Figueroa and Abel Ramos is on the card, supposedly. Now, you need about two or three more of those type of brawls to, to even get a traction of, like, people, you know, sticking to it. But, yeah, that that's one of those, you know, it, it's kind of a hard pass right now. I got to see what the undercard would look like. But it's kind of like the Teofimo, hey, he got his money, but does it mean I'm going to go – pay pay-per-view to watch him fight a, a, a stay busy fight? No, it doesn't, you know? All right. Uh, I mean, that to me, 100% correct. See it no other way, because how many times are you people going to be shelling out money, like, and they'd be asking for 75 bucks per fight. Right. You know, that's the biggest problem. It's like, oh, that's going to be they're like, oh, that's going to be probably an undercard fight, or they just adding it to the card. If it's going to be on pay per view, they're going to put definitely some other big names on there because you can't ask for seventy five dollars and do that. I'm like, um, Al Heyman just did that with a Charlo fight. A Charlo yeah, fight, but those were cool actually seventy five bucks. Those were that's a whole different. Those are two quality fights compared to this. Those are two top five fighters going at it. This isn't Ruiz or Ariola. This is like, and we don't even know that. I doubt the theaters would be back by then. Really? So at really? least you'd have a theater. Ruiz got more experience than uh, Charlo. No, I'm saying Ruiz Ariola compared to Charlo 
against Derevchenko and Charlo against Rosario. Those are way better fights than Ruiz Ariola, though, on paper. Yeah, oh yeah, on paper, yeah, definitely. Right. This is just a fun TV fight. It shouldn't be on pay per view, but we don't even probably have the uh, the movie theater option still yet. You know what I mean? Whereas, right. okay, if I pay twenty two yeah, bucks, the hurting part because I'm like I'm exactly. not going to sell out seventy five bucks. Right, right. I'd have to have some casual fans call me up and be like, "Hey, dude, I'm getting the fight." You know? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> right now you've opened in the door to people looking for illegal stream and what it does is you know you're oversaturating the market for pay-per-view and you're making it generic yeah no doubt about it. I don't think that fight is a pay-per-view worthy fight I, there's just no way anybody can talk me into it it's not a main <laughs> event anymore a co-feature or something no, no, like that no. on a quality gonna... main event? Okay, you know. But that's not what it says right now, you know. It says it's a pay-per-view. I was hoping that was going to be on Fox. That was actually supposed to be in November on Fox. Well, first August got canceled because of COVID, but then November, it sounded like Ruiz uh, wasn't in shape just yet, <laughs> which is not crazy. Yeah. Now he's in shape. Now he's ready. Uh, but, yeah, April 24th is, is what they're what they're talking about when it comes to that. But I agree. I don't think either of those – I don't think it's really, you know, Tiafimo's or Ruiz, despite, are not pay-per-view main events. They're just – they're just not. What do you think about this uh, Garcia Pacquiao? Or are you going to be like, well, let's see it. I got to see it to believe it because Mikey's just talking uh, Pacquiao, to somebody Mike, in an Uber. I got to see Manny Pacquiao go walk into the ring, show up and weigh in before <laughs> – <laughs> I believe anything he says, man. He, anytime somebody got a bag, he comes right, right. in and says, okay. <laughs> and be like, man, look, I got $10 million in this bag here. It's all cash. It's all yours. All you got to do is agree to fight my guy here for two-round charity exhibition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's done. All you got to do is open up the briefcase like Pulp Fiction and have that light come out of the Pulp Fiction briefcase, and Manny's yeah. Manny, Manny will show up. Yep, he's definitely showing up for that. Because his bills are going to, I'm like, he spends, his wife spends money like water, his family, everybody leeching off of him. I'm like, right now, you know, he's like, look, he got his wife a job. She's vice governor or whatever. And got her a political title where she's getting money. So he's always been a politician. So Manny, stylistically, let me try to look at it and see. Stylistically matching up against each other, I see. I see Manny not really being that successful. Uh, early on with Mikey. I think if well, he waits a bit, but I think he catches Mikey Garcia. He's going to really get Mikey's attention. But Mikey don't have the speed, I think, to get away. You know, the timing of Manny Pacquiao jumping in and jumping out. And I've seen how Mikey is when he feel like he's overwhelmed. He kind of shuts down a little bit, you know. And just kind of puts it in cruise control. And just try to do the same things over and over and just see if it works. But, like, the first fight he lost against Arrow, I saw him kind of give, you know, like, I I can, nothing's going to work. This guy's too big, so I'm just going to, like, give in a little bit. Try to tie him up and at least make it the distance. Right, try to survive. Yep. Right. So. Even in that Jesse Vargas fight, he, he, it was a tough fight. It was a good fight. It was really fun to watch. But he took some pretty damn big shots. And we know his power is not the same at 147, you know? Yeah. But, man, I saw that, and I'm like, Jesse has found a home for the right hand. You know, I was like, oh, he's going to make some things happen. But to Mikey's credit, you know, he was able to land a big punch and turn the fight into his favor. But stylistically, I mean, 
Then he'll wait until he sees an opening. Then he'll turn it up on uh, Garcia because Garcia can't really take the punching power. I think it's his weight class. And by him, plus he's ballooned up to like 600 pounds. So he gains a lot of weight <laughs> when he's not fighting. Especially lately, dude. This last one, he gained a fair amount of weight. He even admits that shit. But I have noticed both of them are now in camp. So you're thinking, huh, maybe this fight will happen. Yeah, I mean, Mikey needs to be in camp. He needs to be in a weight loss camp right now because he hasn't been living like a fighter. Mikey, got a, he wears a lot of hats. You know, he, he's somebody boxing is like not his thing. Like, he didn't grow up like, I want to be world champion. You know, that was never Mikey Garcia's dream. Right. His boxing career started when one of the guys didn't show up for the fight, and they just needed somebody to to get into the amateur fight that they had, and they was like, hey, Mikey, you're fighting. Get in the ring. You know, and that started his boxing career. <laughs> and he started out in a tournament. And they are like, look, uh, Mikey could fight him. Yeah, get in there. And Mikey won, you know, and since then they started working with Mikey, and he was like, all right, I guess I'll do this. But he never thought he was going to continuously do this. I, I'm just thinking, uh, where are they going to go now from here? You know, like, I'm thinking uh, if they do make this fight happen, so is it really the type of fight people are going to jump out at? I mean, it's a good fight, uh, but I just don't think it does anything uh, besides make some money. Because if Mikey right, Garcia yeah. beats Manny Pacquiao, then there's a story. But if Manny yeah, Pacquiao oh, yeah. beats Mikey Garcia, they don't really do anything for him, <laughs> really. So yeah, I'm like, this like don't said, really just make some money. For him. Like, I'm like, if he beat Errol Spence or he beat Terrence Crawford, that, now that is not just making money. Now that means something. That's a fight that means yeah, something. Yeah, or so, just being in those fights would be huge. You know, win or lose, right. just to be in those Crawford events. But, yeah, right. you're right. What do you think? You think it'll be DAZN or PBC? Which one do you think it'll land on? Uh, um, I think it'll be the zone. The zone of win yeah. that fight. They'll win a bit for that. Um, PBC is mostly like, look, it's pay per view. <laughs> right. It's got to be really big for them to get involved. Other than that, it's like, look, the pay per view, that's it. That means it's on you. If you want to pay the money, go ahead. But we ain't getting involved. That'd be a nice <laughs> uh, score, though, for the zone to get Pacquiao over there, you know, for signups. Subs, you yeah, know. it would be. For the zone to get a Manny Pacquiao fight it would definitely be great. But I think Pacquiao's a free agent from the from PBC. Yeah. So, you know, and Mikey they, has relationships with both. You know. And Mikey, Mikey, yeah. is cool with Al and Eddie, so he's in a good scenario either way. So it'll be interesting to see what platform that ends up on. Any other uh, items you want to speak on as well, sir? Anything, uh, anything oh, yeah. at all? Oscar Valdez did it, man. We all knew he had the ability. And I, I was trying to get in on mm. the show. I think I must have called too early or something because I got in and it was just silent. I'm like, what is yeah, happening Yeah, I think that's here? what it was. And I'm like, what is happening? I'm in there. They were like, yeah, you're now on the call. And it was just silent. Like, Hello? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh man, I guess. Yeah, man, he put it all together, dude. Valdez put it all oh, together. What a what great I timing so to happy. do that. Because I was like, let me put a hundred dollars down on him anyway. Let's see what happens. Man, oh, I was so excited. I wanted because I had bet a knockout. I bet the knockout. If, I did not. Right. I was like, if you go to the card, he ain't going to win a decision against him. So, let me just put money on the knockout. Because I was about it. Can this guy don't move his head? So, I'm sitting there talking to him the whole time. Like, he don't move his head. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm like, we're watching the fight. I'm in the bar. And I'm telling the guys, I'm like, look, don't move his head. Look at that. Bam. Bam. Bam again. This guy gets hit. I'm like, if I can keep this up, he's going down. And then he, like, ran out of gas. I was, no, no, what are you doing? He was tired already. Oh, man, see, this the weight might be too much for him. This fight is in a bag. 
I'm like, it is. And I'm like, just keep the pressure going. He's going to fall. And sure enough, kept catching him, counter punches. I'm like, you don't even have to exert your energy going after him. He was wasting energy going after better. I'm like, he's going to walk right into it. Let him walk into it. And then he just start check hooking him. Every time he comes in, check hook, bang, get out. Go to the other side, check hook, bang, get out. I'm like, yeah, that's what you got to do. He's going to walk into everything. He is not, he's telegraphing every punch. Every punch is telegraphed. He's looking right at him and throwing. I'm like, oh, he's not even seeing what's coming. And he, man, he kept getting caught. And I'm like, and I thought, like, man, like, they really needed to look at him because his, his skills was off. Like, his motoring skills, he could, whenever you can't walk and your leg is, like, not cooperating, there's some neurological issues going on. These are the, these are the times that people are like, Okay, this is going to be some good fights here because now Oscar Valdez has got the belt and he'll fight anybody. That division is pop. That division is pop. I can't. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because Oscar Valdez will fight anybody. Now I'm hearing they talking about rematch. And I'm like, that fight don't need to be a rematch. No, no sirree, Bob. No, watching, he, that's the last thing he needs, dude. I'm watching his uh, motoring skills in that fight. And when he had got hit, he's been taking a lot of big shots. And they're saying COVID did a number on him. Like, oh, the COVID did a number on him, and that's the only reason about this one. I'm like, no, no, that wasn't the case. I said, they should watch him. He took some heavy shots. Took some real heavy shots in that fight. I was like, I would be concerned. If I was his handler, I would not want to start him off with something light because he took some real heavy shots. I was like, man, they should probably watch him. But other than that, man, uh, that was that was really the, um, the main focal awesome. point <laughs> that I had because I was like, I was, that was the fight there that I was so, like, I'm like, I got to watch every punch, every blow. That was the last right. big fight of the of the year so far. The best fight. It's already knockout of the year. People that didn't even watch yeah. the fight are talking about it. Like, did you see that fight last week when dude got knocked out? He uh-huh. got knocked out. Man, that's going to be <laughs> fight of the year. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's for sure. Knockout of the year, it's gonna be tough. Knockout, knockout yeah. as an underdog too. You know, he was the underdog going in too. So yeah, that that's it. Uh, yeah, man. Hell yeah, I'm glad Oscar put it all together, dude. That was you love to see that when a fighter puts it all together in his biggest fight, and that's exactly. And like you said, 130's popping off. It's it's uh, it's gonna be interesting, man. And we're we're making some of those fights, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Anything else at all, sir, that you want to talk about or cover? Or? No, that was it. I don't think I'm caught up now. There you go. All right, buddy. I appreciate you taking time out and it's good that you called and it's, it's not just blank air this time. <laughs> Sometimes I'll schedule the show just to make sure it's scheduled and then I'll pop on it, you know, cause you have two hours to pop on it. So that's probably what it oh, was. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> so now, at least I know. I'm like, I'm, no, I went crazy. I'm like, what's going yeah, on? Right, yeah, right. Hello? <laughs> hello? 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 <laughs> Anyone here? It's like an empty room and shit. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> all right. Thanks for having <laughs> Take me. Take it on, easy, buddy. buddy. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, man. Peace. All right. Bye bye. All right, Garcino for life. You know the drill. Um,. Do, 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 do. Well, I'll let's see. I, I there. Don't worry. I get some messages. The boxing Twitter segment. You got to have a couple boxing tweets to finish the show. I will. We still got like twenty-seven minutes left. We got time for some some fight news as well. Um, 
Someone just said something about the Pacquiao thing. I literally just read some quotes and played audio of that. So you must have just snuck in before I did that, or maybe you weren't listening or something like that. Um, as far as – actually, I just – like I said, I have a solid source that the PBC is going to announce some fights. Like I said, it was either two or three opponents away from being able to announce a lineup. I believe it to be showtime, but I, I can't say for sure. Um, someone on Fight Hype, the, well, I don't know who does their account for sure, um, if it's that or not, but he said it's been a little too quiet. Why do I feel like a lineup fight, lineup fights are about to drop on us soon. So there's another, someone just sent me that. And also, um, they commented on that audio I just uh, played not too long ago, you know, Mikey, and he said uh, maybe – he was because the, the female was pretty, right? That was that Mikey was uh, delivering this information to. And Fight Hype said they always ask you not to say anything, but you're quick to spill the beans to a pretty face. LOL. Maybe I should break the entire lineup right now. Um, sources, he says. And it's like, a, hmm. So, anyway, so does that mean, you know, does that mean it was on the zone? That sounds like it. It's going to be on PBC. I don't know. I, I don't know. The, the Pacquiao uh, Garcia. That's what it kind of sounds like. But I, like I said, I do have a pretty solid source that it's just a matter of time. They're trying to, you know, those, those lineups where you have whatever, uh, four, eight, ten dates or something. It's tough to keep it quiet. There has been little leaks of stuff um, that we've heard. Uh, like I said, I just heard the Figueroa Ramos, Abel Ramos and uh, Omar Figueroa. Uh, I think that's a good fight as far as a mid-level just brawl. Um, so, yeah, we will get into some boxing Twitter and current fight news in just a short little bit to close the, st- to the show. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my guy, Wood, to see what's going on. What's going on, Wood? How the hell are you, man? Oh, man, I'm all right. How are you? Doing pretty good, man. The temperature is uh, much better than it was about a week ago. So we're still holding heavy <laughs> at 43 degrees right now, dude. 43 degrees at 7. I'm happy, dude. High of 50s this weekend. So I know it's going to snow again before it's all said and done. That's just Minnesota. But um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. Yeah, that's that's dope, man. I got a bike ride in uh, maybe two or three uh, yeah, Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. So, uh, like, but like you said, I don't nice. know if I should go ahead and commit to my schedule that I was trying to keep to this season, or if we're gonna get another snowfall that you know could po- postpone things a little bit. I hear that. I hear that. What's going on, man? What uh, what are what are some stuff you want to talk about? Any, anything Man, in particular? I, well, Carcino kind of kind of stole my thunder, man, and it's I don't know if I go along with boxing being in the worst place that it's been in. Not to sure. disagree with him, but but it, it, no, I don't agree with that either. It's almost like I mean, it's still very, it's still really great because it's so many platforms and there's so much opportunity for X, Y, Z to happen. It's just I agree with him that social media boxing and the fact that as, you know, you write about boxing, I write about boxing time to time, I do my podcast and and YouTube channel, and it's like you've got to play freaking full court press right now just to defend so much of the bullshit that's in boxing because it's just, it's just, we're just inundated with bullshit right now. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Carcino. I'm almost to the point, like, I'm ready to just kind of shut it, shut down anything I'm talking about and covering until we get an idea on when tickets can be sold again and when uh, people can, you know, when fans can attend fights again and the promoters can kind of really bring us some good fights. Because, uh, you know, I have to attribute some of this bullshit to the fact that, you know, they're, they're just kind of in a waiting period, just trying to see what, yeah, you know. what the holding really... cycle, yeah. Right, right. So, I, yeah. so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to give it a lot of leeway, but 
just some of the reactions to some of this shit, like, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest, man. I mean, the whole purse bid thing, and then today for Tessimo Lopez to come out and, and, and kind of burn down everything and talk about moving on from top rank, uh, you know, in a fight or two, and, you know, what that could potentially spark off and and possibly shelving, you know, an exciting young fighter. You know, I, I hate to even get into all, I mean, to even go down that road, but it's like um, the best shit that we can hope, that, that we have to look forward to, man, is, is the fight that we got with Valdez and Burchell. We saw how long it took to get that going because of the COVID and, you know, uh, and, and, and Showtime Burchell had actually, that good card. Showtime had that good oh, card with the 122. Yeah, the, yeah, the Super Bad. Yeah, that that fight. Yep. The Valdez and Burchell, and then um. Then the one Francisco Estrada and uh, and uh, Roman Gonzalez fight. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that they had, and then the fact that they announced uh, Ramirez and Taylor for May 22nd. That's about the best mm-hmm. shit we can that we can run with and. And I hate to, I hate to be the one to interject race into the shit, man. But I'm gonna be honest, man. As a as as a black man, I don't know what the hell is going on in the sport, man. But black fighters, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, man. But black fighters just seem to be in a spot where they can't do shit exciting, period. And I and I, I don't know if it's the promotional stuff. I don't know. The network shit, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is, man. But it's, I can't point to one black fighter who is in a position to where there's any momentum building towards that pers- that fighter doing something really comparable to some of this other shit that we got going on. I, I, I mean, I, you, just, you guys just said Tank and um, Gary Russell. I would love that fight. I don't see it happening. I don't know. Yeah, what I don't know if it'll happen, but that yeah, I would love that fight. I would definitely. I don't know what the Charlo. I don't I know think what Charlo the Charlo will happen this year. I'll say that I do think Charlo Castano will happen in 2021. I agree with that, and I and I think that can. I think that'll happen. But I'm I, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'll enjoy that fight, and it it it'll obviously be an undisputed fight. So that that might be the one in the mix that's out there. But like Wilder, I don't know what the hell Wilder can do. Um, I don't. Yeah, but Crawford, the Wilder thing's a little different because he was he thought he had a fight lined up, you know, the trilogy, and now he's in. You know, they're obviously you know figuring out that contract because they sums up because otherwise they would already pass this hurdle. You know what I mean? Um, but I. But are you talking about like Haney and Andre and just a, a variety of guys that aren't able to get over the hump right now? Is that is that kind of what you're talking about, or just in general? Yeah, basically. I, like I said, I'm not trying to point the finger at any specific promoter. I'm not trying to point the finger at any specific network or platform. I'm just saying I just don't see any black fighters that can go out there and say I want to do X, Y, Z, and they can actually – there's a way for it to get done. Um, that's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, you know, I, I mean, these guys are just standing around. And, and I said this a couple of weeks ago. Even – and I'm not the biggest – I'm not the biggest Broner fan per se. I don't hate Broner. But I'm just saying, so he comes back against Santiago. And you know whether you, I, I thought he, I thought he won the fight, but there's no plan for him to do shit. And and and, it's, and I'm saying it's hard to even get excited for the guy or excited what's going on because he just goes away, and 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 you don't hear shit about him. But then in a situation like uh, Canelo, yeah, you can trash him for this Yildirim fight. But automatically, as soon as he gets his hand raised, he turns around and announces his next fight. Now, I know, I know Canelo is working with a completely different set of economics and, and funding and all of sure. that shit. But and I'm he used saying, to be on a two fights a year thing, too, where there'd be nine months break, too. It's funny how people are getting him shit now for doing, you know, for staying busy. But, no, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. 
I mean, I think Spence. Uh, I think that I, I think you can see Gervonta and Spence have big fights in the future. But I, I know what you're saying. I, I know what you're saying, especially to the ones that can't get over the hump. Um, like I said, I named a couple of them. I mean, Andre's a little different because it's kind of to me, it's a both. I could see a point of him now, but he also dug his own hole as far as saying no to fights and stuff like that. But right, I hear right. what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Like I said, like I, said I think I'm it's good to trying, address too. Right, I'm not like I said. I, I'm keeping it a buck. I'm not trying to point the finger at. It. I'm just saying it seems like there's some lack of vigor in trying to. And I, I'll watch how that comes out. But, but there's some a <laughs> lack of fervor. There's a right. lack of fervor to do anything, and it, it's like you just can't. It's, it's 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 so much competition out here for fans to do X Y Z, and and to watch yeah. this and watch that or go basketball NFL or whatever fantasy football shit. It's just it's 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 disgusting to me that some of these some of the black fighters man they come up and have an event, and then they just disappear and you just see them doing dumb shit on social media for like six months. It, it, it's a problem of mine, and then. And my last shit that's really pissing me off is when some of them got to go online and try to defend themselves. And the the perfect example right now is I'm trying to support this Clarissa Shields fight Friday. I know, you know, women's boxing is is what it is in the States and whatnot. I get it. But I'm trying to support her in this shit. And I'm listening to her on the stuff, the fight hype videos that she pops up on. Now she's on Jamel Hill's podcast. She's over there talking about she's the Mayweather of women's boxing. And yeah, she would have been a she, billionaire if she was a guy. It's like, oh, hold on yeah, she, Let's not go all the compared, way down that path. She, <laughs> she's compared her resume to Canelo's. And one, I'm like, man, look, <laughs> what the, come on, like, seriously? And, right, of course, right. Jamel Hill has no fam- familiarity with boxing no, to even. No, of course, yeah, yeah challenge her on anything but right. it's just like can this shit even sell can 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 it even be 10,000 buys this week I don't yeah know. for $30 29.99 it'll be interesting to see I mean I doubt we even hear that number but yeah I mean that and I'll and I'll say this and I said this earlier her predicament is completely different so I would never rip her for this pay-per-view you know because oh, no, no, it's a whole no, different no. scenario, you know? No, I, like I said, I'm completely rooting for her. I, I mean, I tried to IM her yeah. and, and, and line up a, a, an interview and shit. I didn't even get a response back. You know, it is what it is. But um, I was a little disappointed in how they, the lack of, uh, or the fact that they just feel like, felt, it seems like they felt like we can just announce it and people will come. Like I said, she's been on a, a few a few platforms I saw, but um, you know, not to be able to tell people. I did see uh, a Sparza is added to the card. It looks like Raquel Miller might have fall uh, fell off the card. I was hearing yeah, that I Jermaine right. Franklin. I was hearing that Jermaine Franklin was going to have a fight on there for a couple of weeks. I don't think that's going to happen. So again, it's like. What kind of proposition are you giving fans here that we don't even know what the hell we're getting, you know, what we're getting involved in Friday, but you just want us to give you $30? And, yeah, it's it's half of what we pay, for, over half, more than half, of, uh, less than what we pay for the men uh, headline cards. But uh, you got to throw us a bone. Again, give us some shit to be excited about. And I'm sorry, it's true, Marie though. E. Marie E. DeCare seems like a wonderful woman, and I, I tip my cap to her. But come on, bro. Like, I'm getting Nikki Adler vibes from her. Uh, you know, I, I, I sure. never, fought out, not, never fought out of Canada. No knockouts. Uh, yeah, no, no really good wins. Yeah, you know what I mean? It just seems like a built-up record, if we're honest. You know? Yeah, 30, 34 years old, and I think she did beat 
uh, uh, um, I think she beat a welterweight that Cecilia Brekus beat like two or three times, and that's pretty much it. So anyway, man, uh, it's just it's hard to defend some of this shit. It's hard to get excited about some of it. Um, you you got Ryan Garcia spitting all kind of bullshit into mics, <laughs> uh, especially during this pandemic. And I think it's I think it intensified, obviously. From like April to well into the summer, where then it was all about IG the whole freaking summer, and now that just kind of carried on. And I know what you mean because I actually had numerous episodes talking about some of these young fighters, where I'm just like, dude, it's not a duck if he's going to fight this guy. You know what I mean? Like, right? Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. It'd, it'd be different if someone was fighting somebody not as good as you. Okay, then that's a right. duck. Then you can look at that more of a duck. But if old boy's facing a more, you know, a dude with a better resume than you, then that's not a duck, you know? Right. And and it then a circle back to, you know, the Tefimo Lopez for a minute, like you know, now he's talking about uh, you know, whatever this trailer event is ultimately going to be, him and his manager, David McWhorter, you know, uh, have given off assurances that they will be the main event no matter what, even if it is Holyfield and Tyson added to that card. But I'm just sitting here like, bro, uh, I really don't know what you can put on that card to make me pay $70 no. for that fight. No. That's I, not a pay-per-view main event. You know, it just isn't. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, I, so I'm just, and, and, and to jump ahead and look down the road, like, you can sit here and burn this bridge with um with with top rank. One thing that's in his favor is that he has all of the belts. So, you know, I guess if right. he went elsewhere, you know, fights could be built for him and whatnot. But it's like they had good options for you at lightweight as well as uh super lightweight. And potentially, yeah, uh, one forty, yeah. Potentially, potentially. But what's happening here now is like with this move and, and, and burning this bridge the way that he's doing it, um, how we that whole fake four team shit that people were, you know, that people were talking up and with him, Haney, Garcia, and Tank. There's no right, way, right. there's no money, there's no way to financially put none of that shit together now. If this, if it, with this dude being paid four million dollars, like it's no, it's no bridge to make none of those fights happen now. And. and and then, like I said, in comparison, we sit here and turn around with the with the uh, the May twenty second fight, you know, between Ramirez and, and Taylor, and it's like, yeah, it was some it was it was some be it was some bullshit for uh, the buff to go out with the emails and try to scare the zone and Eddie Hearn away and whatever, whatever. I yeah, I mean, you are taking money out of your fighters, you know purse at that point right. that that is tampering you know in a clear yeah, way exactly exactly i i can't it's, it's indefensible but i'm just saying I, I i gotta understand bob and top rank trying to have some kind of uh trying to control the cost so when you do approach sure. some of those truly marquee fights there's a way to get them done like i said now i don't know who, who steps forward to get any of those fights done yeah, that that's that'll be the interesting part, you know, where he is. It, it's it's making up for the money he didn't make, uh, the full money he could have made with Loma, so that's good. But yeah, where does it go? Some people are like, well, he could just do this with every belt. Yeah, maybe, but maybe Triller will bring him back once. Maybe they won't. Maybe I don't know. You know, it, it is it is a risk. Um, but you know, yeah, I, doesn't mean like I can be happy for Tiafimo that he made some money the money he was supposed to make against Loma, but I can also sit there and tell you that I'm not buying the fucking paper, you know? Yeah, and, and that's what I, you know, I was watching some cats, you know, the, the, the YouTube boxing shit, and it's it's a lot of people clapping and, and celebrating that, you know, Bob took an L in some regards, and it's like, uh, you know, he might have taken an L in a way, but Saving four million dollars and then getting getting the eight hundred thousand for doing nothing, 
and then yeah, if he loses whatever, them, you know, if he has them under for three and a half years, is what he has them for. Or if he loses them, then it's taken an L. Right, 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 right. And that, so, like I said, it, 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 I just hate to see that that whole this 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 once this division that looks so promising. And a kid that looked like he had a lot of great stuff to do. And that's a, again for for uh, and I'm rambling a bit, but for Clarissa, the way she's trying to sell her fight and talk herself up, and now listening to some of the stuff that Teofimo was saying, like these circumstances aren't always going to be here in your favor for you to win on this level. Like Triller is not all, it's not always going to be a purse bid. It's not always going to be a disruptor like Triller out there that can come in and level you up the way that they have. I, I like, and they they came so out right and said that too, Wood. They came out and said it like, "Hey, we're not here to sign a bunch of fighters long term. We're just help, you know, yeah. we're they can legitimize, you know, legitimize our platform and we can help them out. But it, we're not going to sit here and develop fighters and stuff." Exactly. So. So, so again, that's what, I, what you were saying earlier, you know. And I've been saying that on my my uh, on, on my YouTube channel for the last several weeks. Like, if you're sitting around listening to any kid 23 years old and below, if you're sitting there <laughs> and listening to him talk about what he's going to do over the next three years and who he's going to fight and how he'll accept the fight, like, if you want to believe all of that shit, then go right ahead. But ain't that right. true? You know, just to 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 piggyback off what you're saying, he just said in a video, if we could hit two million on that, that would be big. That mean I'd be maybe a pay per view star. It's like dog, if you did two million, that means you'd be the number one pay per view guy active. Like, come on, Dio. Hey, and that, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah, he said that uh, earlier on uh, Barack, the Ock and Barack show today. He yeah, said, uh, yeah, the two. He Hopefully said the it'll two, do two million. Mil. Like what? Right. This. And even, and even like I said, in going out here and saying that we will, we will be the main event, and and, and kind of uh, pinning um, Triller into a position in a way like, well, how does this come out? Because, like we said, for for some people to, I mean, for them to kind of hit the numbers that they're aiming to hit, it's gonna be some some debauchery or some chicanery on, on what they put around this to get people in the building. I mean, you know, to, uh, to, to get the buys that they're looking for to recoup that money. And I'm sorry, you know, if, if that Tyson car, Oh, he came out and said that Oscar was supposed to be the co-main event. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, That's what makes me think if the zone would have won it, maybe that would have been the case or something, but that had been like the closest to an interesting coke feature that I still wouldn't <laughs> find interesting. But that had been the closest because we at least know him rather than some YouTube and a celebrity. But that still wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Like, like I said, I'm interested to see what the price point is when they get it together um, and and then what the lineup is like. But like I said, at, at this point right now, that's, that's not even a, a, a buy that I entertain. You know that I was talking. You know I was bent out of shape about some of the PVC cards last year that I didn't buy or didn't want to buy. So right. you know, I got to be this consistent. This isn't even in the yeah, exactly. And that's all we're asking for people out there is just just be consistent with it. Just just you know what I mean? Like it's it's, it's yeah, okay, I, you know, but just be consistent. You know, that's the biggest thing. Definitely. Hey, but I'm, I'm not. I know you got some stuff to get into before you shut it down and all. So I'm not gonna try to hold you up. But I am excited for Thursday night for the um, yeah for the Boa Chuck and Adams fight. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for that. I I will check out. Um, you know, I will check out um the 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 uh, the Clarissa Shields card. I you know it's thirty dollars. I've been in the house for a year. I got a couple beans <laughs> set aside that I can splurge. <laughs> oh. The last thing I did want to say, though, you know, this is that's another thing that's, again, with kind of constantly have to temper your excitement for boxing. Um, 
you know, Canelo can get rid of, he can get past Smith and then go right into um, Yildirim, get him out of there, and then, go, you know, 10 weeks later or whatever, go into this May 8th fight. And then you go back and think about uh, with Caleb Plant last year, you know, having an easy night against Vincent Feigenbutt and then not wanting to really entertain, you know, trying to put together the uh, the Canelo fight when it was presented to him, supposedly or reportedly. And again, it's, it's well, someone, someone asked somebody, him that question. Someone, someone asked him that question. Would you take it? Right. But again, I like I said, it, some of the stuff that I'm watching, man, I just don't know. I just don't know what the big events are going to be for some of these guys, man. I, I don't know. I don't know if they happen. And like I said, we're just stuck here, constantly defending the shit in boxing and, and trying to connect the, the dots for people who have valid complaints about some of the stuff that we're being offered. You guys, just, you and Carcino just hit on it with the pay-per-view for uh, Rui, possibly, for Ruiz and, right. um, and, and, and Ariola. Right. And it's just like more shit that, that us podcasters got to go out here and try to, you know, reason and massage and everything. And then we see the and then we see the Chiefs get blown out in the Super Bowl, and it's like shit. All this all this sports shit is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. I think it is just the holding pattern, but it, you know, from from the sources that are pretty damn solid, we're we're gonna get a. I believe it to be a Showtime uh, unveil, but I'm not. I can't say that for sure. And PBC has okay. a way of going away and not say anything, and then people say a bunch of stuff, and then they pop one on you. So I think it's I think it's showtime, but I can't say that factually. They are very close to, to revealing a lineup. So we'll see uh, where we go. But you're right. Texas is wide open now. But it, the show's actually yeah. about to cut us off. So if it cuts you off, then you know why that it cut off. 